Uh, the December 12, 2018 meeting of the Urban Design Commission will now come to order. It is 6.30 p.m. May I have a roll call, please? Nicole Ream. Here. Monica Sullivan. Here. Jerry Winchester. Here. Melissa Morris. Here. Barbara Cash. Here. Edlene and Eddie. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to minutes. May we have a motion to approve the minutes from July 11th, 2018? Oh, Push my button on the floor. We have a motion to approve from Commissioner Winchester and a second from Commissioner Cash. Are there any objections to the minutes being approved? Hearing none, the, the minutes are approved. Okay, moving on to special order of business. Are there any I'm are there any disclosures? I'm seeing no one is requesting to speak. Oh, Melissa. Oh, my goodness. I didn't. That's interesting. It, didn't, it did not highlight itself. Commissioner Morse. Uh, I would like to disclose that I was absent for cases 2018-0064 and 2018-0076, so I cannot vote on them tonight. Okay. Can I get a motion to direct Commissioner Morse I don't have to do that? Okay. Because it's already been, ha it's already happened. Right. So. Yeah, I knew that, but it's what you used to highlight green. That's crazy. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's, I'm sorry, uh, Commissioner Morse, that's, um, we'll, you'll continue to recuse yourself. Are there any other disclosures? I don't see anyone requesting to speak at the time, this time. None? Okay. Okay, we're going to move on to the consent agenda. Can we get a motion to approve the consent agenda? It looks like uh, Mr. Yaley, Yell, Yell. Yell. I'm sorry, I always want to do that to you. Uh, has something to say. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just wanted to clarify, uh, the commission does have a supplemental packet of information regarding resolution 2018-006 and the related case 2018-0076 uh, design variance to allow utility substation and supporting infrastructure to encroach into a stream setback in the CER 10 district. Uh, the commission did request a follow-up with a noise and vibration study and the results of that and that is provided to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any comments or is there any discussion? Does anybody want to poll this resolution? Oh, I'm sorry. So we need a motion to approve uh, the consent agenda and then we can poll anything. Okay, I have a motion from Commissioner Winchester and a second from Commissioner Leonetti. Does, is there any discussion? Does anyone want to poll? No? We're good? Okay. There's no objection, so the consent agenda is approved. We're whipping right along here. Okay, so now we are actually moving on to the public hearings. I will read the process for the public hearing. The procedure by which the public may speak to the Urban Design Commission at its meeting is, one, after the staff presentation is completed on public hearing items, the chair will ask for public testimony on the issue. Two, persons who wish to testify will follow the time limits established in the Urban Design Commission Rules of Procedure. 2A, petitioners, including all his or her representatives, give 10 minutes. Rebuttal by the petitioner may be allowed when time has been reserved. 2B, representatives of groups from community councils, PTAs, etc., um, are given five minutes, and 2C, individuals are given three minutes. Part three, when your testimony is complete, you may be asked questions by the commission. You may only testify once on any issue unless questioned by the commission. 
to, uh, number four, an individual may have appeal rights relating to any action the, De the Urban Design Commission takes except commission recommendations to the assembly, which are not ex appealable. Appeals must be filed with the clerk's office within 20 days after approval by the Urban Design Commission of the resolution, which is the commission's final decision. A fee for the appeal is required at the time of filing. Okay, so I have a question um, sort of out of order here. Is anyone here for case 2018-0102? Um, it has been postponed to the January meeting. If you are, it will not be heard tonight. I'm going to move to that to January. I don't see anybody. So we'll need to go ahead and uh, get a motion to postpone case 2018-0102. Okay, looks like we have a motion to postpone from Commissioner Cash and a second from Commissioner Sullivan. Thank you. Is there any objection? No objection. Okay, moving on to the first case here um, on the public hearing. It's case 2018-0111. The petitioner is Moreland Properties, LLC. May we have the staff's presentation? Thank you, Madam Chair. The petitioner is applying for a variance from Anchorage Municipal Code, Title 21, Chapter 7, Subsection 090E, off-street parking requirements to allow a food court style restaurant and commercial food production facility to provide 37 less parking spaces than the minimum amount of required parking. The petitioner is applying for this variance because the project site is physically constrained and is unable to meet the parking requirement for its planned use. In accordance with 21.03.240G, the application must state with particularity the relief sought and must specify the facts or circumstances that are alleged to show that the application substantially meets the following standards. The planning department presents the following findings. For standard A, the proposed alternative achieves the intent of the subject design standard to the same or better degree than the subject standard. The standard is met. The subject standard would be to provide the required parking spaces on site to accommodate each use within the petition site. However, due to the size of the site, it is physically limited from providing any additional parking beyond what is shown on the provided site plan. New developments along Spenard Road struggle to provide enough parking for patrons due to the development nature of the Spenard community. Traveling to and from this site has been improved through many pedestrian and vehicular facility upgrades as part of the Spenard Road reconstruction project. It is anticipated that a substantial portion of patrons will be traveling there via on foot, bicycle, or public transportation, which will lessen the parking demand. Because this business will be operating in a manner similar to a takeout restaurant, it is forecast that patrons of, the, uh, of this site will likely be limiting the amount of time they spend on site. Standard B, the proposed alternative achieves the goals and policies of the comprehensive plan to the same or better degree than the subject standard. Uh, that standard is met. This parcel is classified as a town center transit supportive, cor transit supportive development corridor in the 2040 land use plan, land use plan map, the 2012 West Anchorage district plan, West Anchorage land use plan map, and the Anchorage 2020 land use policy map. The granting of this variance will not change the classification of this parcel in the comprehensive plan, but is rather reinforcing the intent of a transit supportive corridor. Considering the intent of transit supportive corridors and recent pedestrian improvements to Spinard Road, reducing the amount of available parking on site will encourage users to find alternative methods of transportation to the petition site. An existing system of sidewalks, pedestrian lighting, and signalized intersections provides safe and connected walkways to the petition site from surrounding businesses. High frequency, uh, which is defined on a 15 minute headway or, or less, Public transportation is provided along the Spinard Road Commercial Corridor via Route 40 from approximately 6.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Friday. 
Taking these factors into account, there is adequate infrastructure in place to expect that some users of the site will access the site via alternative transportation methods instead of by car. Additionally, this project is compliant with the following goals, objectives, and policies of the Anchorage 2020 Comprehensive Plan. That'd be policy 21, policy 34. Um, it's also compliant with the following goals, objectives, and policies of the Anchorage 2040 Land Use Plan, uh, Land Use Plan Objective 2.2, and Land Use Plan Objective 3.1. For standard C, the proposed alternative results and benefits to the community that are equivalent to or better than compliance with the subject standard the standard is partially met. The proposed development will meet all applicable standards for ve vehicular circulation, ADA access, will feature improved pedestrian facilities, and will allow an innovative use of an existing vacant property. This will be a vast improvement to the existing site conditions. However, because the site is unable to accommodate the minimum, the required minimum parking requirement, it is possible that overflow vehicular traffic will spill over into the public right of way and adjacent parking lots not owned or operated by the applicant. This could create conflicts between property owners and residents along West 26th Avenue. The severity of these potential conflicts is difficult to predict. Minimum parking requirements are, de are determined by applying sound planning and traffic engineering principles, but they are based on averages of expected customer traffic. Because they are determined using averages, there will always be outlier situations where the customer demand exceeds that of the parking required or provided and the inverse of where an excess of parking is provided. The planned business model of this food court style restaurant will likely result in a customer spending less time on site than what would be observed in a traditional sit down restaurant. Because of this, it is reasonable to assume that applying the parking requirement of a traditional sit down restaurant may be an excessive requirement for this use. Standard D, the variance if granted will not adversely affect the use of adjacent property as permitted under this code. The standard is partially met. The planning department is unable to conclusively determine whether or not the granting of this variance will adversely affect the use of adjacent properties. Minimum parking requirements are based on projected parking demand averages. However, it is impossible for either the planning or traffic engineering department to anticipate the popularity of individual businesses. A business that provides high demand services may need more parking than what is required by code. It is possible that during the lunch and dinner hours, this site may observe overflow parking within the public right of way or onto adjacent parking lots not owned or operated by the applicant. This type of customer behavior is difficult to predict or control in an area like the Spinard Road Commercial Corridor, where businesses have historically struggled to provide minimum parking required due to its development pattern. Standard E, the variance if granted does not change the character of the zoning district where the property is located is in keeping with the intent of code and does not permit a use not otherwise permitted in the district in which the property lies. This standard is met. This variance will not change the character of the B3 district where this project is located or permit a use not otherwise permitted in the district. And this variance request is being processed in accordance with the procedures of Anchorage Municipal Code and is in keeping with the intent of code. And standard F. Persons with disabilities are provided with access as required by the Americans with Disabilities Act and reasonable accommodation. Uh, the standard is met. The granting of this variance would not restrict or impede ADA accessibility or reasonable accommodation. Standard G, the variance if granted does not adversely affect the health, safety, and welfare of the people of the municipality. And that standard is met. The submitted site plan shows several improvements to the site that will enhance the flow and safety of both vehicular and pedestrian traffic accessing the site. Currently, there is unrestricted access to the parking lot along West 26th Avenue due to the previous installation of rolled curb. The petitioner will be removing the rolled curb and installing vertical curb to, co to create three controlled access points. Compliant drive aisles to accommodate proper turning and maneuvering of vehicles are shown in the submitted site plan. The granting of this variance will also allow for the redevelopment of a vacant property. Improving site, site aesthetics and establishing a daily presence will reduce the amount of unwelcomed activity at this location. This will be a benefit to the surrounding community and the people of the municipality. And standard H, uh, in evaluating the request for a variance, the maximum sign height, the Urban Design Commission may consider whether there are special topographic circumstances that would result in a material impairment of visibility of the sign from an adjacent roadway, which significantly diminishes the owner or user's ability to continue to communicate adequately and effectively with the public through the use of the sign. Uh, the standard is met uh, simply because the standard does not apply. Uh, it doesn't involve a sign. 
And uh, there's some additional considerations. Uh, comments were submitted by the private development section uh, stating that the petition site is being used as overflow parking by the Bears Tooth Theater Pub. Uh, planning did look into this and uh, we can confirm that there is no formal shared parking agreement between the petition site and the Bears Tooth property. Um, it has not been established or recognized by the municipality. Uh, because the petition site is not subject to a formal municipally recognized shared parking agreement, it is out of the scope of, of review for this project to require a parking analysis of the Bears Tooth site or, or factor any parking conflicts at that site into the findings of this report. And, uh, and with that uh, said, the department finds that standards A, B, E, F, G, and H are substantially met, and standards C and D are only partially met, therefore recommends denial of this variance. Um, and then one last uh, housekeeping uh, task I did. There were some late comments that were submitted uh, that did not make it into the staff packet but have been supplied to the commissioners tonight. And those two comments would be from Mr. Stephen Plant and Mr. Troy Wolkoff. So, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Yale. Yale. Are there any questions of staff? Okay. Will the petitioner please come forward? Please state and spell your name for the record and if you would like to reserve any of your time for rebuttal. Sure. My name is Laquita Chimilowski. It's C-H-M-I-E-L-O-W-S-K-I. I'm with Dal and I'm representing Moreland Properties this evening and I'd like to reserve three minutes for rebuttal. Thank you. So tonight we're here requesting a parking variance for the lack of 37 spaces for the redevelopment of Lamex and the Tortilla Factory. Moreland property is uh, committed to the redevelopment of the Spinard area, and this is evident not only by the purchase and redevelopment of this parcel, but other businesses that they own in the area. The redevelopment of Lamex would be for a food hall, which is something unique to Anchorage. It's the first of its kind, and it would also include a building addition, which is to provide accessible uh, bathrooms and elevators, which don't currently exist in the building. The tortilla factory would be reserved for food manufacturing that would not only potentially support the redevelopment of Lamex, but other businesses in town. This is a tremendous opportunity to reuse an existing facility that's in the Spinard District to further the growth and the development of the area. One of the difficult things about this development is how to calculate the parking, because food halls don't fit nicely into any of the categories that are currently provided in Title 21. Right now, it has to be uh, calculated as restaurant, which is one space per 100 gross floor area. So an example of how this is kind of, might be potentially skewed for this type of development is that for the building addition, which is, again, only for restrooms and elevators, based on restaurant parking, that generates 22 parking spaces in itself. Another example is that because this is a kiosk-type setting uh, where, where food vendors are located in these separate kiosks, it generates uh, almost double what you'd typically see for kitchen space. So again, it's causing more parking that may, than may be needed. This area is also, or the redevelopment's also located in what has been identified as a town center in not only the 2040 plan, but the West Anchorage District Plan, the Spinard Corridor Concept Memo, and the 2020 Comprehensive Plan. A town center is supposed to be a destination for dining, entertainment and shopping, and it also encourages shared parking and alternative modes of transportation, not only walking, biking, but also public transportation. 
The city's already taken steps to implement these plans by um, implement or by including the installation of bike lanes, upgrades to pedestrian facilities, and a mid-block crossing at the project site as part of the Spinard corridor uh, upgrades. They also installed public parking areas uh, within the area. People Mover also has a bus route along Spinard, which has 15-minute headways, and there's a bus stop adjacent to the project site. The petitioner also wants this to be successful and doesn't want to become a burden to their neighbors. They, to help encourage this recipe for success for this development, they already have a, a, um, a culture of using alternative means, in, means of transportation. At their existing facilities, almost approximately 10 to 20 percent of their employees either ride their bike, walk, or take the bus to work. They also want to further that with this development and are looking at potential options for providing bike parking outside and inside the building above and beyond what's required for, by code. They also replatted the parcel. It w was uh, three separate parcels with a right of way that extended a adjacent to Lamex north south, and they replatted to vacate that right of way to allow them to maximize the flexibility of redeveloping the parking. This helped to address uh, not only the amount of parking that could fit on the site, but also the circulation um, and safety of cars and pedestrians coming to and from the site. They were also able to include a sidewalk that runs adjacent to the building from the sidewalk along 26 um, that doesn't currently exist. Another step that they took is to do a parking study for Chilkoot Charlie's and the Pack Rat Mall across the street. They own Chilkoot Charlie's in the windmill parking lot, and the two, the two are tied together by a shared parking agreement. Right now, there's 189 parking spaces uh, amongst the two sites, and what we found in the parking study is that the majority of the time, 80 to 90 percent, or 170 to 150 parking spaces are available. At the peak times, which are t generally Friday and Saturday evenings, there's approximately 82 parking spaces that are not utilized. There's also on-street parking on all the adjacent uh, roadways within 100 feet of the site. We went out and took a look at what was available, and it appears that, there, that there's approximately 178 on-street parking spaces amongst the streets nearby, and if signage was installed to better define uh, driveways, there'd be a potential for another 30 to 35 parking spaces. They also tried to purchase the lot to the north of Lamex to provide additional parking, although the current owner is not interested in pur a purchase or a lease at this time. They'll continue to stay in contact with them, and if that opportunity arises, they will purchase the property to provide additional parking. They continue to look for opportunities not only to provide parking, but to invest in Spinard. With this being a town center and wanting to to promote development and growth in this area, it becomes a balance between what we value. Is it parking or is it development or is it something in between? If we value parking, then we may miss opportunities like this one to redevelop and continue the growth in the area where, because properties will be taken up to provide surface parking. When we attended the Spinard Community Council meeting, they made it very clear that they didn't want to see this area become large surface parking to meet all the required Title 21 requirements. I believe that with the work that we've done to show that there is parking in and around the area to, to address any potential overflow, and the work that the municipality has done to implement the plans that are in place, that we will not become a burden and that 37 spaces, variants for the 37 spaces should be granted. With that, I can answer any questions. Thank you. Thanks. You do have three minutes for that rebuttal. Are there any questions of the petitioner? Commissioner Winchester. So, um, thank you. A mm -hmm. um, couple of questions I had, and you were running through that really quick, was how many parking spaces did you say are in 
the area off street parking and adjacent? Off street parking, there is, let me find my number again. There's approximately 178 on street parking spaces within the area. And then there could be an additional 30 to 35 if you added signage or defined the driveways, because in many cases it's rolled curb and there isn't a defined driveway. And when you say adjacent, what, I mean, is that 10 blocks away, two blocks away? It's within 800 feet. Okay. And just, okay, thank you. And mm -hmm. another question, you said the replat has been done because we're sitting here looking at, you know, whatever this is four or five lots and a easement. That's already been done? So the, pl the plat hasn't been recorded yet, but it has gone before the platting board and been approved. Okay. Okay. And so the variance is to go from the parking that you're showing on here, is it 97 spaces? 87 spaces. 87, uh -huh. okay. And the requirement based on the code would be 124, is that correct? 115. 115, okay. Yes. And the, one other question, you mentioned something about Chilkoot, and I was trying to follow <laughs> sure. that, but you were moving really quick. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so Chilkoot Charlie's and the windmill parking lot is yep. across the street, yes. and they are tied together in a shared parking agreement with the Pack Rat Mall, which is on the fireweed side. Yes. Um, and so we did a parking study to see how that parking is utilized, because a lot of the plans that are out there now call for a parking district or shared parking. Right. Um, and so this was kind of our step to, that we could take with the properties that they own to start looking at that. Um, and what we found is that, that that parking area is underutilized and so that there is an opportunity. And because the petitioner owns that, the windmill parking lot, that, you know, that could be utilized by Lamex and they're not going to tow them. So there is an agreement with that parking across the street the, to the par There's an existing shared parking agreement between the Pack Rat Mall and Chilkoot Charlie's. Okay, but there's no existing agreement between this property and the Chilkoot no, Charlie property. No, because the Pack Rat Mall has a different owner. Okay, the Pack Rat Mall is a different owner. Correct. But the Chilkoots is, is owned by the, the petitioner. Is owned by the petitioner. Okay, sorry. Correct. I'm just yeah, sorry, it's very all confusing. The dots connected <laughs> here went really out for me, and I'm trying to connect the dots. Sure. So, Chilkoot Charlie's owner, which owns that property and the windmill property, correct? Correct. They have an agreement with the Pack Rat, which I understand that, the little mall there. Correct. So, is the so they have this agreement for their parking. Is there, is there any thought that they're, but I guess they're using their maximum parking. I mean, is there any so, thought that there could be an agreement between the Chukwu Charlies and the windmill property and this property? So there, there has been. The, the problem, there's a couple things that are going on. So one, the, the existing shared parking agreement between Chukwu Charlies and the Packrat Mall is to meet their required parking per Title 21. Right. And so, um, so that's one issue because to allow the traffic engineer to grant us a shared parking agreement that would include all three properties, we'd need to do additional parking studies and make sure she was on board with that. Um, and then the other part is that you, we have another owner, and so they have to be agreeable to all of that, which they may choose to say no mm -hmm. to participate in all of that. But I guess our, our intent was to show, to look at whether there was excess parking in the area because a lot of these plans call for a district parking plan and we're just not there yet. This development's coming in prior to that happening. Um, and what we did find was that there was available parking. And can you tell me 
those percentages again of sure thank you <laughs> so during the majority of the time 80 to 90 percent which is 150 to 107 parking spaces are not used and on Friday and Saturday evenings is when they see a peak in their parking. Mm -hmm. And even at those times, there was approximately 82 parking spaces that were not used. So on the peak Chilliku Charlie Friday, Saturday night, there's 82 spaces in Chilkoot's Windmill and Packrat Mall spaces available still. Correct. And that was done as some sort of study you have documented? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we, we are in the process of uh, routing that through the tr municipal traffic engineer, but it was something that the petitioner decided to do to look at, you know, is this really going to have an impact? Sure, sure. So that study is done and documentable and could be put forward as additional documentation to this just I'm trying to find something that's not just your <laughs> verbal saying it but an actual study sure so um, so we have submitted a draft to the traffic engineer for review it has not been finalized yet gotcha. um, and I think she's here tonight to speak to that but um, my understanding is she uh, is agreeable in the methods that we used and I mean it's just finalizing the process okay so the traffic engineer is here to speak tonight to this yeah. I think she can speak to where we're at in that process for the parking study. Okay. If you have any questions for me, I am here to answer it. I'm uh, Stephanie uh, Mormillo, Municipal Traffic Engineer. Okay, thank you. Um, hmm. Okay, I think that's uh, what I have for right now. Okay. Let that settle a minute. Thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner Leonetti. Thank you, Madam Chair. Hi, Mr. Malowski, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you for the presentation. This is a, a great project. Um, it's, uh, this example has been done successfully in other parts of the country. Anchorage is, I think, the first one to attempt it north of, well, in Alaska for sure. But right. the, the, uh, the, the bonus is that a lot of people can go there and hang out and get a variety of foods and then take off and do their thing. Um, the, the challenge that that I think we're faced with is if it's the right location. And what's before us is a parking study based on the use. And the use is, is I think, a great example, and it's really successful in specific parts of the country, and I think it can be successful in, in Anchorage. Just questioning if this is the right location. Um, and that question is, it, it could be improved and answered if you know some, some data on ridership on the bus and what percentage of those riders you think will could potentially go. And then same with cyclists and pedestrians, because there's a lot of discussion tonight and in the case packet and in your submittal that references all of the study, uh, uh, the, the plans and, and the municipal guidance to get here. However, there's nothing that says that, that you guys have looked at that. And there's nothing that says that, that, yeah, we think that there's 100 people going down this road on a bike and we might get 10% of them or something to that effect. So yeah, we did not go to that level. Um, and it might be difficult without a lot of research to get some of that information. Mm -hmm. I can speak to the culture that the petitioner has at their existing facilities. I mean, not only do their employees come there on bike or bu walking or riding the bus, but I mean, of course their patrons do too. They, so, so you have that data? What, what is, do you know what that is? Um, I don't know the exact numbers for all their patrons, uh -huh. um, but I do know that based on discussions with the petitioner, there's about 10 to 20 percent of their employees that do use alternate modes of transportation. Right. Yeah, I heard that. Yep. So um, this whole case is it's hinging on on not the employees, it's the people going there. Right. So I think there's two things going on. There's the meeting the Title 21 code requirement for parking, mm -hmm. the plans that encourage alternative modes of transportation and shared parking. And in this area, I think even though we've kind of focused on parcels that they own, we're showing that there, there is some excess parking that, mm -hmm. um, in the area and that uh, a district plan, a parking plan of some sort might be uh, the right move forward. 
Um, I do know in speaking with the Spinard Community Council that we went and presented before a couple times, they were really supportive of this project and they were very focused on the fact that we provide alternate modes of transportation, whether it be bike racks or, mm -hmm. and encouraging that. Um, we just didn't, you, you know, it's a, it's a somewhat large burden to start gathering all that information and getting into the weeds to, to know what those percentages are. And some of them would be assumptions at this point. Mm -hmm. So do you, is there a way to figure out the, the amount of people that go to Beartooth and, and are on foot and on with a bicycle or bus? Um, I think if you did, you could do a study to see how many people come on bus. Or, well, I guess you could, you could definitely do a study to see how many people come on bike. It might be difficult to determine how many people come by bus or walking. But again, that's a cost and a, an additional burden to the petitioner. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I think we all know we, that, that if you were to go to Beartooth on a great night on a sun, sunny afternoon or any, any time, it's challenging to, to get a parking space. And what we don't want to do is encourage that same problem. So, I, and I guess to speak to that, I mean, they do meet their required parking per Title 21. Mm -hmm. And they did do, um, the city did a, a on-street parking study of 27th. And what they found was that um, during the majority of the time, the on-street parking was available. Even in the peaks, it may not be available right at the business, but when you moved further down the street, it was. Um, so I think you see some anomalies at times uh, at the Bear's Tooth, but they do meet their required parking. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. So I have a couple other questions here. Um, this, this notion of the, uh, that Mr. Winchester was talking about, about the available parking, you mentioned it's available. However, the Chilkoots owns the, I mean, uh, the, same, the petitioner owns Chilkoots but doesn't own the, the mall, the Packrat Mall, and, and that parking is available. However, it's not usable. Well, it, <laughs> so I, I was speaking to this, this idea of shared parking um, within a district, uh -huh. And so it is available um, because they own the property. I mean, if somebody parks across the street at their neighbors, they have no control over whether the person would be towed or not. But on their parcel, they do. And so what we were showing, what we were trying to show, is that there was parking available if it were to spill over off of the the Lamex site. There's parking available on street and across the street. Mm -hmm. And and if it were amenable to have a condition that said to have a shared parking agreement, that's where the challenge comes in with with the traffic engineer and also with the different owners. However, that's what you're promoting without a traffic or without an, an agreement. Correct. It becomes it could become challenging if it was a a condition. What I'm promoting is implementing, continuing to implement the plans that have shown this to be a town center and have addressed to implement them, encourage these types of things, this redevelopment and promoting alternative modes of transportation and shared parking. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's one lot. There's another lot that's uh, to the, let's see here. I think it's to the, uh, let me see here. That one, to the north of the tortilla factory. It, it's kind of fenced off and it's, the, there's a uh, 25th, and, 25th and Spinard, the restaurant on the corner, northwest corner, 25th and Spinard. I forgot the name of it, um, but they have it signed as that park. And it, is there any communication with them to have shared parking? There has not been communication with them to share parking. And, and again, we'd have to go through a whole analysis. You know, do they meet their required parking? And then is there an opportunity to share? And is the owner agreeable to that? Mm-hmm. Um, they have, like I said, they have reached out to the owners of the lots adjacent to Lamex, just to the north of Lamex. Mm. There are two vacant lots, and actually the city tried to buy those lots as well to turn into parking as part of the Spinard Corridor upgrades. Mm -hmm. um, but that owner is not willing to to sell or lease the property mm. at this time. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, are there any conditions on the plat that would affect this case? No. Uh, could you 
reiterate what the petitioner is bringing to the commission that encourages other elements besides what's already been built? Pedestrian amenities, landscaping, anything so, that improves the community. So, so certainly on site, they're re, reconstructing the entire parking area. Mm -hmm. um, right now, it's one big asphalt section. Mm -hmm. uh, and so and the, in doing that, they are enhancing the landscaping. They're providing a pedestrian connection from the roadway adjacent to the Lamex building um, to the end of the parking area. Um, the driveways will be defined, which they aren't now. So, and we worked very closely with the municipality traffic department to discuss how we um, lay this out to get a good amount of parking as well as taking into consideration site circulation and safety. So those are all improvements that aren't there now. Um, as well as that they are, as moving forward, they are gonna be looking at what types and amount of bike parking, secure bike parking they can provide, whether it's inside the building, outside the building, both, um, beyond what's required by code. Mm -hmm. Anything at the interface with Spinard Road? So, so right now, so there was parking out there originally, and as part of the Spinard Road project, that parking was taken away. Right. And so we aren't far enough along in design, but there's been a lot of discussions about providing a plaza-type area where people can come and... Mm -hmm. um, you know, making it inviting, and that's probably one location where there'd be bike parking mm -hmm. uh, of some sort. Okay, but that, that's not in the plans currently, but you guys have been discussing. Right, I mean, because, you know, to, move, to be able to move forward with the development, the variance is needed, and so mm -hmm. we're, from a design perspective, we're in a conceptual phase. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's see here. That's all I have, thank you. Thanks. Commissioner Sullivan. Hi, um, I have a few questions. So you presented a calculation based on old Title 21, which she was 124 spaces, and you went to, uh, no, you have a new, and then old was 120, and then you refer here to new code parking standards. Um, how did you got to the 152? So, so we originally, so in your, in our application package, we started out looking at how, how do you calculate parking for this because food halls are not one of the options. And so we originally looked at it as if it was restaurant under new Title 21. And then we also took it a step further and looked at it um, under old Title 21, which would have been based on number of seats. And then because we were kind of seeing these anomalies where the building addition was generating a lot of parking and the kitchen space was generating a lot of parking. We uh, looked at what would the parking be required if you calculated the, ch the kitchen space as um, like a catering and where that got us. And so that, that's what was presented in the packet to give you an idea of how that fluctuates depending on how you look at the uses and that it just doesn't fit nicely in any one use. But the 100, uh, it's saying that you require 152. It's uh, based on which code in that? So we actually, um, <laughs> under new code, we need 100, uh, 124 total spaces. So this 152 comes from? I guess I'm not sure. 146 plus the 6. It's your 146 subtotal for La Max okay. plus the six sorry. spaces of tortilla parking. Correct. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, the 152 is, and then taking the, we are, have non-conforming rights for 28 okay, spaces. Okay, so good. It's the 124. And then your snow removal. How are you going to deal with the snow removal since the site is very occupied? So by code requirements, we're required to either provide 5% of the paved area as storage on site or to enter into a recorded snow agreement. And so that, that would be addressed at, um, during the building permit process, but most likely it would uh, require entering into a snow removal agreement that gets recorded. And then basically you're using uh, West 26th Avenue as your parking movement uh, because 
you know, I, I don't know if uh, there's any concerns with safety uh, because you have a pedestrian. I mean, we're encouraging pedestrian in um, in Spinarn, and then we're using uh, the pad of the pedestrian as your aisle turnaround. So there was consideration given to how the site would circulate, and that's why we're um, a limit. We're having two driveways instead of three to try to control some of that. So there's just two driveways. Okay, Correct. That, the last one, it doesn't, I can't it, read it. It dead ends. Okay, it yeah. dead ends, that's a dead end. Yes. Okay. And having two that close, what was that decision versus having two that they're a little more separated? I just. So they'll actually be separated. The, the one in the middle is the one that does not connect. Oh, okay, it's the one yeah. in the middle. The one in the middle is the one that doesn't connect, but then how do you, so, okay. So, three. Yeah. Sorry, I misspoke. There's three driveways. So, I mean, the there's any anything that will do anything for the pedestrian? I mean, I'm just looking at your use sure. this as your, Turn around. It's part of your parking. You're increasing. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what other people think, but it seems to me that um, we're trying to accommodate pedestrians, and at the same time, we're like breaking into the pedestrians' and we pathway <laughs> very often with cars going around. So we had very many. We had a lot of things we were trying to balance when we looked at the site plan. It was the how many parking spaces could we fit to make the development move forward? Um, the pedestrian safety, the, the site circulation, also the ability to add parking to those two lots to the north if they ever become available and how that would interact with the parking lot overall. So as we worked with the municipal traffic department, I mean, this was kind of the best solution because the, the more you take away for drive aisles, you start impacting the parking that you can provide. That's understandable. Okay, I think that's all my questions. Thanks. Thank you, I, Commissioner Leonetti. Thank you, Madam Chair. A quick question. I, I, I have some similar issues with the, the parking lot. I, generally speaking, it's, it's a horrible design. No offense or anything, but, but it does maximize the parking. It has two dead-end parking stalls or parking drive lanes. And um, and on the existing commercial building, there's roll-up doors there now on the east. Uh, east Of the Tortilla Factory. Yeah, of the Tortilla Factory, yeah. Correct. Are those going to remain? And is that why there's no sidewalk adjacent to that right now? Uh, I don't know that a decision has been made at this point. I mean, the, the discussion has been that that would be used for food manufacturing of some sort. Um, so... The way that the parking's laid out now wouldn't necessarily lend itself for those to remain operational, um, but we're just not far enough in design. And so, so the non-conforming thing has happened. The reduction is in process. Does this meet current Title Twenty One standards for the existing development that's for the, there now? This parking lot layout does it meet the the well? I don't think it has to meet the interior because of the. The, there's a lot of things that the non-conforming <laughs> determination Correct. causes that the, the Title 21 is trying to have that isn't there, but now there's more parking even though it's reduced, and so all those niceties are gone. Uh, not, not completely. So, so all, in Title 21, the, one of the things is that they, as they want you to move closer to compliance, they can't require you to do things that would move you further out of compliance. So although we're upgrading the site to have additional landscaping that isn't there now, we aren't necessarily meeting the complete code for interior landscaping requirements because that would move us further from compliance for parking. Right. So do you have perimeter, parking lot perimeter landscaping? Yes. And that's intended to be installed? Correct. And then the interior is the only one, and then the adjacencies and setbacks from property lines and like the one on the west, it looks like it's 
I don't know, four feet away from it. So yeah, the buildings do have non-conforming rights for their current locations. And so basically all of, so there's a conglomerate of things that are, that you're doing and some that you're not. And, and that's in health to add as many parking spaces as possible while taking away as many as possible. For a, a <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's not as simple as that. <laughs> it's striking a balance to allow the right. building to be redeveloped while taking into consideration pedestrian access, site circulation, the possibility of adding additional parking on those northern lots if it ever becomes available. Um, all those things factored in to this site plan. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner Winchester. Thank you. So, you know what our problem is. Our problem is we have two items that are partially met. And what I'm asking you is, how do we meet those? What, what can we say that says you've met those that the staff hasn't already addressed? I mean, it appears to me that your 115 spaces, you know, your 87 plus your 28 non-conforming <clears throat> puts you in a position of 115 spaces. And, um, there's a need for a hundred and you know for 37 more spaces than that. Is there is there some wording or some idea that you have of how we get around this? I mean, where where is this? I mean, we we've looked at across the street. You've looked at all these various things, but at some point we have to have a findings of fact here that says how this works uh, for the local community. And so I'm looking for something you might be able to say to us that would allow that uh, as part of your testimony to be part of a, a statement. Mr. Winchester uh, and all of the commissioners here tonight, this really is um, an interesting one. And yeah. when, Excuse me, I'm so sorry. My to name is Tim Potter, also yeah. with Dow. Um, <clears throat> aged, um, but my memory still does work. Um, when, when Mr. Mulowski asked me to peer review um, this project. Um, it was very interesting because going back and looking at all the plans that have preceded this, even back into the 80s with the Spinard Road plan, this project is exactly what all of those plans plan for and put in policies and strategies to make it happen. And as, as I listen to you struggle, because we have the subjective position of the staff that says partially versus substantially, which there is no definition of. And I understand the quandary. <clears throat> and at that point, I think there's a couple of tests. One is functionality, and, and one is we're supposed to be moving towards those policies and goals established in, in this series of plans. And my direct comment to Ms. Timolowski was to say, wow, I wish I would have had this much to work with on some of the variances I've processed in the past because the roadmap is there. And I'll say right out on the record that the reason that you're having any consternation at all tonight is that if you look at the plans, the city has not initiated what it is clearly said they're supposed to do. And that's to define this as a district and address parking on a district-wide basis as well. So we have a 15-minute headway um, bus and people mover system, which is a big deal. And that was the whole intent of restructuring the people mover routes to have a lot of bus service here. We've got a situation where we put in a lot of pedestrian improvements along Spinard Road and this piece. It's very nice. And when Commissioner Sullivan and Commissioner Leonetti are talking about what have you done for the pedestrians, well, there used to be, and this is where you need to remember the context of what was there. There were seven parking spaces fronting on Spinard Road that were legal, grandfathered parking spaces that used to drive across the sidewalk and back out across the sidewalk. There's been a huge improvement as part of this endeavor. When you start looking at the viability and the functionality, 
if there was a word that said this area was a district, the municipal traffic engineer would have the authority to not come to you for a variance. And all that she would have to find would be that there's adequacy of the number of parking spaces between what is around it through agreements on the public streets because there's an allowance within a district to provide parking as part of your parking requirement on street. It's the type of tight development that everybody wants. When the Spadar Community Council indicates that one of their biggest fears is that the code is driving everybody to create more at-grade parking lots and not redevelop as much as there, that's their biggest fear. We have a funky district that people go to because it's funky. And that's what we should be celebrating and trying to work here. Our test should be, as Mr. Winchester pointed out, show us how it's functional. We've gone out and we've surveyed, measured with a tape, everything to identify all the distances on those side streets to identify how many parking spaces are there now and how many could be created if you either didn't have rolled curbs or you put signs up like they have downtown in a tightly dense developed area that say you can park between here and here. If you did that, you gain about another 35 spaces. So that's additional parking that's functional for the area and within less than three blocks. So that's very important. The property across the street, we did a detailed study, which the traffic engineer can address, that actually went out and took videos for 24 hour periods to be able to go back and see the cars and vehicles that were parked there through that whole 24 hour period. And there is a, even in the peak periods of usage on Friday night and Saturday evening, there's still a bunch of unused parking that's available on a piece of property owned by this property owner and petitioner. So from a functional standpoint, it's there. The tricky part of that is there's an old parking agreement that was done between the former owner of Jilkoots and, and the Pack Rat Mall. It's not a very good agreement, and I think the folks in code enforcement and the folks that keep track of non-conforming um, uh, conditions would say, boy, they really wish that that had not been done. It's a really poor um, parking agreement, and they hope that as out of all this happens that it can possibly be redone. It's our intent to address that and try and get it redone, just like it is the owners are attempting and have standing offers on adjacent pieces of property. There's just things in life that were an older gentleman owns the two pieces to the north. His daughter is managing the property and doesn't want to do anything with the property while the old man is still alive. Um, I, can, I can understand that. I think we've proven that functionally the parking is there. So to address your tests, I think that we are substantially there, not partially met. Mr. Potter, with all due respect, the, the question that Mr. Winchester brought up was basically C and D of, of what we're looking at, and that is benefits of the community so, and adversely affecting adjacent properties. So when referencing these available parking spaces, the question that's banging around in our heads is, does that benefit the community or does it adversely affect? And in my mind, it has not been answered yet. So I completely agree with everything you just said, okay. but it doesn't answer and, what we're still hanging around. And I, I, guess and I spoke I, out of turn, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, what I would ask Mr. Leonetti you, and Mr. Chair. Winchester um, is... Oh, can I just interrupt you one second? I apologize, Mr. Potter. And yes, Commissioner Leonetti, calm down. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Mr. Yell, can you please speak? I see that you've been trying to speak for a while now. and. I think you might have something to say. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just wanted to, to clarify, uh, Commissioner Leonetti is correct. Um, the standards that uh, are still partially met are C and D. Uh, the Planning Department agrees that uh, this development is in keeping with the goals and policies of applicable comprehensive plans. There's no argument in that. I uh, just want to clarify that. Thank you. 
Thank you. Oh, continue, Mr. Potter. I'm sorry. Um, I guess I'd, I'd offer to suggest that maybe you ask the planning department if, in fact, if the strategies and policies of all of these plans lined up for the last 40 years had been um, implemented, would we even need to be here tonight? And uh, at least based on my experience and knowledge, we wouldn't need to be here tonight. In my view, this is exactly the kind of project that all of the plans call for and fully support it being there. As far as impact on the adjacent area, um, Let's see, when a church um, has a big deal around Christmas time. Okay, okay, I apologize, Mr. Potter. I believe that the testimony you're giving now is sort of in line with a rebuttal, and so we would need to be putting this time on that three minutes. So if you're answering question, the question for C&D, we're, we're not questioning your... I'm attempting, I'm attempting to do that to Mr. Leonetti's um, question. Okay. And, and, and again, where do you draw the line of adverse or not. If there are times where a business overlaps or a church overlaps and the parking spills over, how many days or events or times is it necessary to have that happen to make it adverse? And I believe that we've shown with our parking study and counts of this on-street parking that could be created beyond what's there now, that there's adequate parking in the surrounding area that will be able to absorb the parking requirements of this site under the code. Thank you. Commissioner Morris. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> I'm, so sorry. I'm so sorry. Still recovering from the tonsillectomy. I would like to hear from the traffic engineer on where the traffic study is and where you see it going. Um, through the chair, we met this week to go over the traffic study, the results of what, it, um, what they observed out there counting on the two lots. Uh, right now, I mean, there appears to be capacity available within the area that is within the ownership of, of this subject parcel. The difficulty lies in meeting, you know, shared parking. There are certain conditions that have to be met for shared parking. And you have to consider all of the users. And because that parking that they're talking about is already in a shared parking agreement, so you have to make sure that all of the parking standards for all of the uses are going to be met if they coincide. And not knowing this ex what this use potentially could be, there's no clear way to demonstrate that. It does appear that the capacity is there with the counts that are currently out there. Um, Chilkoot Charlie's lot is not nearly in heavily as heavy demand as it once was. Uh, they even studied on a weekend when the Spinard market was going on and took into account the amount of parking that was taken up by the market itself. Uh, they're really there does appear to be parking capacity. It, then it's kind of meeting the letters and going through parking agreements. Do, I mean, this is a notarized document that is agreement with the municipality of Anchorage that all of the owners have to agree for a minimum of 10 years generally that they're going to continue to share this parking. And uh, sometimes it can get quite touchy. There is a lot of surface parking in Spinard that is underutilized because you have owners that are unwilling to share parking. Uh, we're working through it. I don't know that we're there yet. Um, Thank you. Ad additionally, one more question. You touched on it um, in saying that you study during the farmer's market, but because we don't have the traffic study, were all seasons of the use of traffic mentioned in the study? So summer specifically, was that covered? Yeah, it was specifically, um, the study was specifically done in the summertime, uh, not, it was done September, October time frame, I believe. So, no, it was not for all four seasons. I, generally, you. for shared parking agreements and the shared parking studies that I have people do for many reductions in parking agreements that come to me, they are not required to do 
long-term seasonal studies. We generally try to capture their typical everyday peak because we design roadways. We don't design for the peak of the peak or else the Seward Highway would be eight lanes. You know, you, you tend to design for what your average peak is going to be. Um, so we generally work with the petitioners and identify what time frames we want to see. And they did the counts during the time frames of what we thought the peaks of those businesses would be. All right, thank you. Commissioner Leonetti. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Mr. Jimalowski, so is, do you have um, an idea or perhaps a past history on how the petitioner has been working with adjacent neighbors that become a little disgruntled because of parking? So in the event that if we go through this and it's approved and, and there are available parking spaces, like Ms. Marmillo is discussing, and it happens to be that, that somebody this starts to get irritated because now it's a change in their routine and whatever. Um, is there a past history that, that the petitioners worked with adjacent landowners that they could share with us? Yeah, the petitioners here tonight, and I think they can best address that question. Oh, great. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, <clears throat> I'm Rod Hancock, one of the owners of Moreland. And uh, I'm happy to speak a little later. I just Some of these questions... I could answer, so I don't know if now is the time or not. I don't know what the format, but I just wanted to introduce myself and say that. Thank you. Can you please? Speak. Oh. Oh. So, uh, have you answered the question? About yeah. Can you please state and spell your name again one uh, more time? Rod Hancock, R O D H A N C O C K. Thank you. And I do think the commissioner might have had a question for you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so if you could speak to <laughs> your history working with adjacent landowners who have become a little disgruntled because of traffic and congestion and how you, how <laughs> yes you well and that's why um yeah so herb lee who owns that mall in between the 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 beartooth and the the exlamex it uh it, we've never had a great relationship and they've towed cars through the years and stuff like that so that's a that is a classic case of both of us have times when we have available parking and neither of us can agree and so there's no mutual parking agreement and it doesn't work that well. Although interestingly, the mall put in a, a cycle shop, a spin class thing, and now they've been parking in our Lamex for the first time and we have not been towing them. Uh, and so I do see, I, I do see the inevitable uh, commingling as the neighborhood continues to develop all the time we see people park over in the well soon to be former rei mall uh, walk over our customers have dinner then go to rei there's a lot of that already anyways and really the only one we've had a big problem with is uh the herbally right adjacent but i guess just to just to quickly help you understand the uh, the relationship, so we don't want a bad project, and so we have to have enough parking. So I just wanted to clarify the what happened when we, we purchased the Lamex building, and then we knew we wanted to do something like this food hall. And so we knew there wasn't enough parking, whether we got grandfathered or not, right? And so we did purchase uh, the Chilku Charlie's when it became available uh, for that very reason, for additional parking. So. What we have right now is we're 37 parks shy to meet the meet code, and uh, I think the parking says we actually have it. It just isn't legal because it's taken by Chilkoots, but the parking studies show that it's not often used. In fact, it's underutilized, and we already have. Uh, excuse me. We already have a um, agreement to because we bought it, and when we release to Coots, we created a non-exclusive parking agreement with them. So we, no one can kick us off of that parking. We just can't officially count it. That's why we're looking for a variance, because we can't count it, but Coots doesn't use it. But they have to count it for their, their parking, if that makes sense. So that's sort of the, but we, Coots can't say you can't use the parking, because we made it part of their lease that we always here and forever we'll get to use it it's not recorded but it it is for for us okay great thank you does that make sense yep it does thank yeah. you commissioner cash thank you madam chair um along that same line my question is and by the way i want to thank you for this presentation i think it's a wonderful concept and i would love to see that 
being developed and Spinard needs that kind of project. I too have a few struggle, struggles and I want to know if you can help me with this, the single um, issue that I see that bothers me a lot is that um, although we're not discussing, we're not here to discuss the bear tooth analysis and their parking needs, it is recognized that overflow parking is happening in the Lamex slot now from Beartooth. And that makes me curious because if you have all capacity in these other lots adjacent and surrounding, how is it, help me understand, how is it that they need to park there? So I, I don't know that what you're seeing is overflow from the Beartooth. Um, Beartooth does have adequate parking there is adjacent on-street parking, and even in the study that the city did for 27th for on-street parking, there was capacity uh, for not only the Bears Tooth but other businesses around there. Um, there, it's just really hard, and many businesses struggle with the need for parking. So, it's this balance of that there are these underutilized parking areas, but then you have to have agreements amongst the park the property owners and that's sometimes hard to do um but i will reiterate bears tooth does provide the required parking per title 21 and there is not a shared parking agreement between the two parcels and there's been no study to know to really define that that the overflow is coming from the bears tooth or yeah the bears tooth okay I guess it was an observation that was made um, that we received the information from. Um, the, other, the other question, just so I understand, these parking agreements are simply put together by mutually, mutual beneficial um, and agreeable landowners, pro right? Property owners. Correct. I mean, it's just up to them personally. I wonder if, uh, how do we encourage that to happen and... and because that is a real critical component to what we're describing tonight, I think, is having the ability to have this mutual parking. How to, how, what, what can be done to stimulate that? Because it's a real hinging element. Well, I think, I think one of those things is creating a district parking area, which allows the municipal traffic engineer more flexibility for um, providing parking reductions based on, on the area use. Mm -hmm. um, another option, although... I don't know how this would all come about, but is to create a district that's maintained by another um, entity, kind of like you see downtown with the park and uh, park and pays, um, so that you don't necessarily have to have landowners agreeing the lots are operated and owned by a different entity. But that is a long-term yeah. uh, option. No real short-term solution. Correct. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Commissioner Morse. <clears throat> I'm really sorry about that. Thank you, Chair. Um, the following comments are based on being a Spinard resident. Although I did not attend the Spinard Community Council, I have heard the feedback from my neighbors. Um, I happen to live across the street from the president of the Community Council. I noticed that the Community Council letter did not include the discussion of the additional bike parking but I think what I'm seeing is it would be a lot easier to prove that you are providing an alternative that benefits the community which is C and that you would not be adversely affecting the adjacent property which is D um, if we had an understanding of what you're going to be doing on the spinard face of the lot so there is a com oh. so one of the major concerns with the Spinard Community Council was providing bicycle parking and how could we go about doing that. And so at that meeting, um, Moreland committed to, to providing as much as they could and they were willing to look at alternatives. So not only providing it outside, but was there a way we could provide it inside and provide secure bicycle parking? Um, we're not far enough in, along in design to say this is our plan for that area, but there's every intent to create a plaza area and take advantage of that location for providing bike parking and attracting people to come there either on a bike, by bus, or walking. Thank you. You're welcome. It, 
Furthermore, is there an adverse reaction to creating a condition that requires a pedestrian amenity on the east face of the lot? Is there a what now? Sorry. Would you have any opposition to the commission creating a condition with our approval, the condition stating that that space would be used as a pedestrian amenity? I, I guess wh which space for pedestrians specifically? I think we'll have walk paths in the front and Yeah, the just the, the, the space in front of the La Mex building on the Spinard side of the building. On the Spinard, we'll have what it already does, doesn't it? But yeah, I mean, that's... There'll be there'll be a bike there's a bike path there and a, and a walkway. Mm -hmm. so. I think uh, pedestrian amenity meaning more so than just the the transit, but actual use there. So, she wants to know if you're going to augment it and make it a really nice, attractive plaza. And, and oh, it's, it'll be it'll be it'll be attractive. <laughs> yeah, we're going. I mean, we're going to spruce it up. We're we're real big on. Uh, on community development and uh, uh, both for the Moose's Tooth and the Bear Tooth, we bought more parking than either of them was required. And we, so we did the same, I think, in spirit here with the Chilkoot's acquisition. It's just that we can't record it because as we talked about already, it's recorded for Coots, but it's available. Um, so biking and uh, I'm, I bike everywhere all the time. My brother commutes every day from, from the hillside to work. So we're very bike pro bike pro pedestrian and uh, and I mean this project is about a, a community involvement of a lot of different vendors and all that kind of thing so mm -hmm. we very much want to see that Thank we you. we all I mean we support the 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 spinard market by the way is something that we we don't charge them and they use our property to do that as well as the Thursday food trucks although both could be eliminated for parking but I'd hope not to have to do that I think my question was answered. Thank you. Commissioner Sullivan. Um, I've just been trying to listen and uh, brainstorm, like, what would I do if I was designing this building? Because I, I believe that it's important for the community, and I believe um, some of the stuff that uh, Tim Potter was saying that if it was already everything implemented, probably we would not be here. But on the other hand, I see the plans, and it seems to me that you have 413 seats, and there's a lot of open space in between the seats. Like, there's a lot of space in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Did you ever thought about, like, reducing this, the area of the restaurant and doing any other use that, or maybe more common space that will provide something different uh, for the visitors, like, you know, like, a, a, I don't know, like a billiard tables or things that will occupy space and, and create something for the community other than... I, I just feel like 413 people, well, then we put more chairs and more tables, and then suddenly we're going to be increasing. I mean, it's like an open plan that will suddenly be increasing, like, occupancy, and we'll have more people and more people. I mean, I'm just... So, I, I was, so the reason, and I'll let him speak to that specifically, but the reason we're here tonight is because parking now for restaurants is based on the gross square footage of the building, so the entire building restrooms, okay. mechanical room, everything. So not that we wouldn't provide those amenities, but for we'd still be here asking for the variance because it wouldn't reduce our parking in any way. Yeah, but if you will use something, so, or, or maybe changing part of the use to something else. So that, that was discussed early on to hold approximately four to 5,000 square feet as a warehouse, like don't develop it. And the reason we moved forward with the variance was to allow us to develop the entire building so that it was, a, you know, at, created as a whole instead of we're just going to ignore this space so we can meet parking requirements. And, and then uh, Barbara Cash have a question here um, regarding, like, the overflow of uh, the bird tooth. I go there a lot, and I'm always, like, trying to park where I should not be parking, like in the front. But obviously, the front parking, it's kind of like closed during night. So it's very easy for, for them to define who is parking there that should not be parking because the business is closed. How are you going to make sure that I am not going to go and park there 
I mean, there's overflow. I really, truly believe that there's a lot of overflow from the bird to. You mean at the Lomax or at the like, Hurley in the I, mall? If I can park there to go to the bird to sometimes that I can't find parking, maybe yeah. I will park there. Well, and, and um, we encourage that. We have always, uh, whether it's the Moose's Tooth and our neighbors there or anywhere, we've never towed uh, anybody in all of our developments. We encourage uh, area parking. And I think, I guess to answer those C and D, I feel like we've met them in the sense that we bought this Chilkoots uh, area. We gave ourselves the rights to park there, whether they're legally recognized or not. And there's a lot of them, as the parking studies showed. And we are going to encourage Beartooth people to park over at the windmill. We're going to encourage, we, we have not towed or even harassed or anything, the spin class, the marijuana shop that parks over in our area. I actually see Spinard going towards this communal parking idea and we're stewards of that and we own enough of the property at least to get us pretty far there and I think in this case there is a, a clear indication that we we are there there is actually enough parking right now even for a pretty busy food court uh, because Coots just has a lot of excess parking 10 years from now will they I don't know but maybe Herb Lee will have sold the property or come around because that mall very much should be you should be able to go to spin class and then go to see a movie you should be able to go to spin class go to food hall and right now there is actually enough parking so why would it happen if we just approve the case and then something happens and it's a mess there <laughs> I mean I'm just nervous about like the, the traffic and creating a problem? Well, I'll only say that I, I grew up in Portland. Uh, I went to school in Seattle, and uh, I love those cities. And they've, they've transformed themselves into some amazing things. And I always imagine Spinard is kind of like a Capitol Hill, Queen Anne, a Northwest, or a Hawthorne in Portland. And, you know, parking's tight. Parking's not always fun, but those, those communities are fun. They're vibrant, and neat things are happening, and people want to go there. And we lose a lot of people to Portland. Uh, they go back, and, or they, they leave to go move there, and I want Anchorage and Alaska to be as cool as those places, and, and this is part of it. And what about those cool parking um, stalls that push the car up? I mean, that are oh. in that city. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you know, the, the, actually, the municipality was talking about building a, a, um, a parking garage in Spinard, which I think would be a little sad, actually. I'm hoping that I, I still, like I just said, there's actually enough empty space if all the community could agree. I'd rather not see a big parking structure. I'd rather have us push forward, make it work now, and then, Frankly, driverless cars and Uber and things in the future will eventually reduce parking needs uh, as well. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and tell you to plan on that now, but I do think in the future density can increase for a variety of reasons. But we have it in Spinard, and we own enough of the land to try and make it work, even if a few outlier neighbors don't. Okay, thank you. Um, I would like to ask the rest of the commissioners what's their thoughts. Oh, but after Jerry, probably. Does Jerry's thoughts on what? Commissioner Winchester, would you like to ask uh, a question? I, I have one more question, and then I'll answer that question. How's that? <laughs> um, y you did a parking study or that was related to uh, directly to the use of the spaces versus total square footage of the building. And you came up with 111 spaces with the 28. You got down to 83 required. Is that correct? And I guess I'm trying to analyze that in, in, in lieu of the 87 that you have. Yeah, so, so based on our discussions with the municipality, we were required to look at the um, facility from as a restaurant use. And so as I was going through that, these spaces like the building addition and the kitchen seem to be creating more parking than what should potentially be required. So, so that last parking calculation that's in there based on the uses was my attempt to uh, 
account for all the uses, but not looking at the kitchen as the one to a hundred because it, the kitchen space um, is larger than what you typically see in a restaurant mm -hmm. and is generating quite a few parking spaces relative to the probably typical number of employees that would be there. So that's how I came up with that last parking calculation. And so, and I'm, I'm understanding that, and so I'm trying, though, to relate as a percentage. I mean, you said that there's more kitchen than normal. And so I'm trying to kind of go, okay, how much more? I mean, I don't have my, you know, I don't have my architectural so <laughs> AutoCAD version here looking at this saying how much additional kitchen space, but based on what, for instance, Lumex had as kitchen space originally versus what's here now, is there something that we can hold our, I'm yeah, looking for something so, to kind of grab yep. onto here related so, to that. So um, typically in your packet, it talks about that. And typically it's five square feet per um, mm -hmm. number of seats. And so for a restaurant of this size with the 413 seats, it would require 2,065 square feet of kitchen. In our current plan, there's almost 3,500 square feet of kitchen space. So, so it's substantially larger than what you would typically see in a restaurant. And so there's, you know, at 3,500, that's 35 parking spaces just for kitchen. Mm So what that really means is 1,500 square feet less or more kitchen, if you will, than what you would normally have. And at a seat per 100 square feet, that's at least 15 parking spaces more than a normal facility would be. Correct. And correct? Yes, and then you do have some slight redundancy because each kiosk is set up to maybe have one or two employees, similar to what you see in a mall. Mm -hmm. um, so there's some redundancy in that one to a hundred calculation as well for the kitchen space. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And now I'll answer the second question <laughs> from, you wanna do that later? Okay. Uh, Commissioner Leonetti. Thank you. One quick question. Mr. Uh, Hancock, you said something that is really great, which is people in the spin class can go get something at this new spot. Right. Tell me other places in, around Spinard that that, that would happen. What that, do you mean? That that's, can, good, that's good. That's a good thing. You mean like the synergy of these businesses? Or yeah, 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 yeah. Are there other elements like that on the street frontage? And maybe, maybe take 10 minutes or whatever and then come back and... But, but if there's other ones that are easily identifiable, then well, I, that's great information. Yeah, I think everything in that mall, sadly, we're losing REI. But all of those, mm -hmm. whether it's the, the middle way and the hearth or the, the Anchorage uh, uh, Athletic Club there, uh, REI currently oh. is a retailer. Mm -hmm. The Beartooth, a movie theater. If you want to cross the busy highway, you've got a, you know, you've got a lot of the makings of a community center there. And, uh, and, and we feel like this, this food hall, which employs a lot of different small vendors mm -hmm. uh, and is different than a, than a typical restaurant, though it has many of the sim uh, same features as well, is another addition to that. Okay. And, and, and the, 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 if, if, if we can't do a development of that sort, I mean, certainly we can do office spaces or something there. I mean, we'll develop the property. I, I don't think it'll be as is exciting and as lively. part of the community and lively, yeah. Okay, great, thank you. <clears throat> Commissioner Morse. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> uh, just one of the, the arguments that we've heard is the kitchen space is larger than it would be in a traditional restaurant, but doing the square footage calculation based on what you provided me, I found that you had 13,821 square feet in the building, and 30% of that is actually quite a bit more of what you would find in traditional kitchen space. It's 
4,146 square feet. So that would actually increase if we use that rule of thumb number that you were referring to um, in your study. Although I do, I am in support of your law mex parking, your third parking um, <clears throat> calculation. It's just one of the things I needed to point out to my fellow commissioners. Commissioner Sullivan. Okay. So I'm just looking again at the plans. It seems like if you have 413 seats and some people comes in the bus and some other people comes in the bikes, it will work, right? It seems very reasonable. But what's going to prevent the restaurant to put more tables and have suddenly 700 people in, inside the restaurant. Why would it happen to the parking then? I'm just saying there's a lot of space there to add tables. So I, I think one thing to keep in mind is that no matter how they configure the tables and the amount of spaces, um, I mean, the whole idea is to promote alternative modes of transportation to get there. So I, I do think that um, kind of what was has been alluded to is that if the parking spills over, and, and whether they park somewhere else or not, if, if people have a perception that there's not enough parking, in this particular area, there's all the components for them to consider getting there by another means, whether it's Uber, the bus, walking, biking. I mean, that is what the town center is supposed to encourage, and this development fits in with all of that. But I, I will say, I, it is not their intent to you know, put in 700 tables. I mean, they don't want to become an issue to the neighbors. And, and as I've stated, it, the petitioner stated, I mean, they have went above and beyond to purchase additional properties to try to help offset the parking in this area. Reasonable. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other comments from... Commissioners, for or questions for the petitioner? Okay, I think now we're going to open it to public testimony. Is And there's someone here to testify. Can you go ahead and state your name and spell it for the record? Hi, Tyler Robinson, um, R-O-B-I-N-S-O-N. Um, I, I, I'm speaking in favor of supporting the variance. Thanks for listening to, to me tonight. If, 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 if our fear is that the biggest anchor in Spinard on the north side of Northern Lights bought up another couple of properties and wants to be as wildly successful as they already are, we should be jumping for joy and saying, please, please come help us implement our community plan. We have plan after plan after plan, and I've sat as a planning commissioner, I've sat as a planner, and I now sit on the private side, said, how the heck do we implement these things that we've been talking about for 20 years? And I think the opportunity that we have here tonight is to make a giant step forward. Will it be Will it have constraints? Will it, will, it, will it have problems? Absolutely. I've bought property in, in Spinard and have absolutely the hardest time redeveloping and reusing those properties. It is the largest challenge that we have as a developer in my day job. And yet we do it because we think it's what the community wants. And I believe we've heard from the community council, we've heard on countless plans, and we have an opportunity to really do the right thing here. I will say on uh, number, what was it, C? benefits to the community, mothballing parts of a building to employ that many fewer people in a neighborhood is not the preference that I'd like to see. I'd rather deal with some parking constraints than mothballing a building. Um, on, the, on the other side, uh, you know, in my property, we have to tow people regularly, and that's in areas that aren't nearly as constrained. It's unfortunately part of owning a private property. When I think about this standard and the variance, what I'm worried about is what are they doing to have other sort of externalities that I don't have control over as a property owner? 
I don't see those things here. I see them improving the frontage along Spinard Road. I see them improving the parking lot. I see them making a, a vibrant investment in a neighborhood. I see all of those things as positive. What, what I, if someone, we all learn in those urban places, including those places in Anchorage, how to go around, or we choose not to go there. The risk is on the private property owner here. It amazes me they're willing to move forward here knowing that's their risk. Why? Because we've told them we want a town center. We've told them we're going to build a road, and we did that supports transit and pedestrians and bikers. We've done all those things. They're doing exactly what we as a community has, has asked them to do, and now we can't get over those two standards. I think we can. The, the rationale that I just described absolutely gets us there. And first and, and, and as you know, the chicken and an egg, when you asked whether or not this was the right place, absolutely it's the right place. I would hate to see them go to South Anchorage with this food court, food hall. I want them right there in Spinard. Um, I also believe that when you talk about bus and transit and walking, the parking needs to be hard for those things to start to be more viable. Anyone that studies transit will tell you that. So thank you for listening to me. Happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Robinson? Thanks. Commissioner Winchester, hold on. So I just really quickly, you said you own property in Spinard. Could you tell me where that is? Yeah, we're not in that area. We're Cook Inlet Housing, uh, okay. Church of Love, New Mixed Use Building. And I, and I will just, the, the story there is we bought that church to tear it down mm -hmm. uh, and build a parking lot because we have deficiencies in, all over old spinard, old fireweed, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, we decided to test it for a couple of years and say, hey, could this actually be a community asset in some way, despite our parking constraints? And we actually found that it was wildly popular with community members. And so now we're dealing with the same problems that they're dealing with, which is how the heck do we cobble together enough properties that don't have the right drive aisles, that don't have the right landscaping, that don't have all this, right? And until we start to understand the need for more flexible standards in redeveloping areas, you're, the only ones you're seeing going forward are the Cook Inlet housings and the accomplished local developers that are here because they want to be here. You're not getting the other people because they, they're just throwing in the towel on this stuff. It's too hard, we, and we make it even harder for them. I'm not necessarily disagreeing you, with you. The problem is the Urban Design Commission doesn't make the policies or, the, or, or actually set the municipal standards in place. We're sitting here having to try to meet these standards that somebody else put in place and, and then meet a requirement for a variance based on, you know, and I, I don't think there's a person here that doesn't say, wow, this is really cool. And, and as an architect in a lifelong Alaska, and I say, this is, this is wonderful. I mean, you know, I grew up when Spinard Road was a dirt road. Um, the problem is, how do we get through this? And your testimony is really positive, and I agree with you, uh, except the, the questions I've been asking the owners and, and the petitioners is, help us figure out how to get through these things right. until somebody can figure out how to rewrite the information so that, you know, or the city can catch up with what you're doing in Spinard, which is to designate it as a district, establish a parking, you know, a policy, and, and work with the landowners to resolve that as a town center, not just sort of put a big dot on the map and say, oh, it's a town center. Right. Now leave it to the Urban Design Commission to figure out how to make it. Yeah, and, 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 and so it, that's not exactly our job, and so I, I'm having this conversation with you because you there, and you, un, and I understand yeah. housing and the church and all those things that are going on, but we, we need help too from everyone to figure out how to get through these things so that we can make things happen in the city. Yep, I, there, there wasn't a question there, but Mr. Chair, can I, can I respond to that? Sure. Madam Chair, okay. Um, the, the, uh, I believe the city will always play catch up, and they do in every city all over the country, right? It's by definition, it's the pace of the bureaucracy, right? I had a no, no dream that there'd be a district parking scenario done before they actually realize that you need one, yeah. right? And that's sort of the precipice on which we stand right now. What I would say is, if the alternative in the town center w is go find, I can't remember how, the 37 spaces, right, then what we're actually doing is we're contradicting the vision that we said we wanted in the town center in the first place. Mm -hmm. We're actually saying, go surround this building 
this individual use with more parking which is exactly opposite of all of the diagrams and renderings that we have in the plans that we adopt, which is the policy that we're here to implement here right now. So, and, and the reason why they're here is because it, it's not black and white, and there is the opportunity for a variance process to have to weigh these standards. Yes, you have to find that you can meet these standards, but I think you can, because I think the alternative is a, is, a, is, a, is a worse outcome for our community and for the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Is there anyone else who would like to testify from the public? Please state your name and spell it. I'm Steve Plante, P-L-A-N-T-E. Thank you for allowing this opportunity. Hey, I live on 26th Avenue for several years. In fact, when I came over here tonight from Minnesota up to Spenard and 26th, not one single parking space was available. In the late afternoon, the parking spaces diminish, and by dinner time, they're all taken up, and it's like that until the following morning. And Lamex is vacant right now. So when I came over here tonight, the pot shop was so jammed up, there were people parked in front of the fire hydrant. There was not one space available in Lamex or on the street. And so this is with a vacant building. So I think that, you know, we can talk about bus riding and bike riding and walking all we want, but we're Alaskans and we love to drive. And we demand that right and we do drive. And here's something else, I work on 26th Avenue I've worked on that avenue for 20 years, and so I, I am a pretty good witness about what's going on there. And there is constant overflow from Beartooth over into that area, especially the Lamex parking lot, because as uh, Mr. Hancock mentioned, Herb Lee is onerous and will have people towed away. So that creates a conundrum for them. I mean, in a perfect world, they would buy the Spenard Center and make that the central parking lot, right? Yeah, that would be the perfect world. But because of the relationships, it just is not happening right now. So with, with that intersection at Spenard and 26 jammed up all the time, I think that it's right action to follow the municipal codes and at least require the provided parking based on the formula and not create any variances because the area is already exasperated parking ways. And now with the uh, cycle center moved in there, they'll have 75 or 80 cars three or four times a day. And it's just like, wow, this place is really jammed up now. And yeah, there are a lot of people using uh, Moreland's property to park on that are not Moreland employees or um, tenants. But, you know, in the, in the spirit of community, they allow it, and that's good. Thank you. Are there questions for Mr. Plant? Do you need to finish what you were saying? Well, yeah, I'd like, to, um, I'd like to just sum up by saying that I think it'd be a great idea to possibly pare down the project, maybe just use one floor until they could acquire that lot on the north side of the building because without that lot, it all comes down to ingress and egress on 26th Avenue. And when there's cars parked on both sides of the road, there's not enough room for two cars to pass without slowing down to about two miles an hour. It's just not enough room. 26th Avenue is so tight right now. If 
they had that lot or when they finally get that lot, then they can have ingress and egress on Spinard Road. That would relieve so much stress on 26th Avenue. And like Commissioner Leonetti said, possibly it's a little ambitious for the amount of land that they have right now. And I love these guys and I love this project, but I'm living with this congestion on a daily basis. So I vote against the variance for, for right now. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would wish to speak? Please state and spell your name for the record. Sure. Good evening. My name is Paul Malin, last name M-A-L-I-N. I love this project, too, um, but I have mixed emotions, as the commission seems to have as well. Um, I have a condo on 26th, and right now I'm renting it. My son is going to live in it next year and his wife. And I also live in Spinard, about four blocks from the Rustic Oak. And I want to start with the Rustic Goat because you're probably aware of, of that situation was somewhat similar. There was a need for a community type um, place, a bistro. And the idea was that people would walk or ride their bikes or find ways to get there without using cars. And as you're probably aware, the amount of traffic, because the Rustic Goat was a very popular concept, and the community embraced it, and they embraced it by going there and driving there. And the traffic on the streets was horrendous. So ultimately, as you probably know, um, because the traffic was so bad and there was no parking, <clears throat> ended up taking part of the park and turning it into a parking lot. And that parking lot is full. I mean, I, I live on 32nd. I drive by the Rustic Goat every day and every morning, and every evening the parking lot is virtually full, even midweek. I've had the same experience. I love the Beartooth. I go there with my wife, um, and we are generally, almost inevitably, in the overflow parking at Lamex, and generally, that's pretty full. So when I see a plan to add a potential of 413 seats and another bar where people are going to be consuming alcohol um, in addition to the, the, the Coots institution there, I have concerns being, having firsthand experience with the amount of congestion and the, the difficulty about getting there and finding a, a place to park. So and I understand now that the commission has to find these factors and it's not necessarily a reflection on your um, view of the worthiness of the project, because I think we all agree that this is a wonderful concept. Um, but I, I have reservations about the way this may adversely impact people who live close by, just from what I've seen from both living on 26 and having renters and family there, and seeing what happened with a similar type business um, that was wildly successful, as the bear tooth generally is in the rustic goat. So thank you for listening, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Mr. Malin. Are there any questions? Thank you. Anyone else wish to come forward and speak? Okay. It's nice to be able to see Ms. Cash now and not hidden by the uh, exhibits here. Mark Butler, B-U-T-L-E-R. Can you please state and spell your name for the record? Mark Butler, oh, B-U-T-L-E-R. I didn't hear it. <laughs> uh, so, if I may. Um, so, uh, I uh, wear lots of hats uh, unofficially in uh, Spinard. I'm vice president of the, of the North Star Community Council, which is two blocks away from this project. Um, it was presented at our council. We did not do a formal resolution. It's meeting right now, but um, tonight is our night. But, um, uh, but there was no opposition to this project at all amongst the people in North Star. Um, uh, 
Um, secondly, uh, I'm the chair and one of the co-founders of this Bernard Farmers Market, and so we share that lot uh, due to the generosity of um, um, of, of the landowner um, on Saturdays for 20 Saturdays a year in the spring when the bar is not using it because um, the bar is closed. And so that shared concept of parking, I think, really, really works here. Um, Spinard is famous for lots of things, but it is the leading retail commercial district in Alaska. Spinard is. Um, it's where private property, uh, private uh, 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 family-owned businesses like theirs, large ones and small ones, uh, thrive. Um, it's not a big place for big corporations to do business, so there's a few McDonald's and things like that. Um, it's the arts district. It's a place where people go to drink and uh, eat and party. My generation probably eating more and partying for a different, a younger generation. Um, uh, it's the cultural center. We have the farmer's market, the jazz festival, uh, the international film festival. It is the thriving district. And uh, I fought uh, uh, and worked, as many people did, to try to get the road project done in a way that could cram all the amenities we wanted into a very limited uh, right-of-way. And um, uh, there was great opposition to it. Um, and now there's far, far fewer opponents of it because it's working. You used to have to step into the street often uh, because uh, uh, the, uh, the snow on a night like this, um, yesterday when you had snow plow, it was literally plowed onto the narrow four-foot sidewalk. Now we have eight-foot sidewalks, and we have a, a space between there and uh, snow storage space and bike lanes and so forth. So it is a thriving district, and these guys are the entrepreneurs that have been starting to buy these properties. It's John Weddleton, um, who bought Bosco's and took an old, beat-up old building and turned it into something. And he had uh, challenges trying to meet the right-of-way and parking and so forth. So I think shared parking is the concept. Um, this is um, a great project, and there are others like this where I think the bank building will be redeveloped and other spots like that that I think are coming soon. And those of us who live in the area, I work on fireweed and live down the hill in what we call Lower Spinard, like Spinard, but oh, not as nice, um, is our slogan. Um, and um, we literally walk up the hill, and we go to the arts places. We do what Rod was talking about. We, we try to, instead of driving across the street, cross the street, Across the street, we try to, to go to one, to the other, to the other, and do that. The reason our market is on Saturday, though we're... Does, does someone want to allow him to finish? Commissioner Leonetti. Mr. Butler, could you yes, please sir. finish your statement, sir? Well, thank you. Thank um, you. The <laughs> reason the market, Spinard Farmers Market, which is in a completed its ninth season here, um, is on Saturday. Everyone said, well, there's lots of markets on Saturday. Do it on Sunday. And... Um, uh, and the reason was we wanted to do it on Saturday was so that people could go to the market, go to spin class, go, uh, yoga that used to be there, and do those different things like you do on, in many towns. You go to the town center and you do, do a bunch of activities, whether it's small town, country, or an urban area like this. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Butler? Thank you, Thank you again. Anyone else wish to speak? Okay. It looks like we have um, heard from all of our public testimony. I'm going to go ahead and close uh, the public hearing. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I can we go? It, does uh, the petitioner wish to speak to their to to the rebut? You do have three minutes and twenty six seconds. Thank you. So I guess just to clarify a few things, I, I understand the the concerns with what happened with the rustic goat. I think something to keep in mind is that the rustic goat was set in a different environment. It was adjacent to a strip paved road that didn't have on-street parking. This development's gonna be located in what's been designated as a town center. And I think we've heard lots of testimony tonight that although um, maybe not everyone has the required parking, there, is, there are already people that are parking at one location and going to different businesses, which is the whole intent of the town center. And so this project would only further that concept. I think with the parking study that we've done, we've also shown that if, if everyone were to come in their car, which is not the intent of the town center, there is adequate overflow in the adjacent property at the Chilku Charlie's windmill. This project is furthering the goals of the plans that are in place. And... 
And I think that it's a benefit to the community for it to move forward. I think the detriment would be for it to not move forward or to have to modify the development to fit within what is the required parking that can be met. And that may not be a, a development that is exciting as a food hall or maximizing the use of the space. I don't have anything further. Are there any questions? Jerry, Commissioner Winchester. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so the, um, how would you address the testimony tonight, for instance, that 26th Avenue was completely parked up tonight and that there are times when this lot without any thing going on in it and I don't mind you can answer or or oh, you know the, or the owner can answer that that the, that his parking lot is already partially full um, and we haven't even opened this facility yeah well um, two things going on one so if if look over at the coots lot right now and there will not be a single car in it mm -hmm. So that's one, there's 150 parks. And then actually, because we did a lot of underground work and dirt work, the, the normal parking right now is all fenced off at the, at the Lumbex building. So you can't park at Lumbex right now. Oh, okay. Because we, we, we disrupted, we put in sewer and did some, uh, did some underground work, and so we couldn't repave before the winter, and so it's all actually fenced off. So there is no relief parking at all right now. Uh, in any of the Lumax, it's actually all open and but unavailable for parking. If that so, makes sense, you can't park anywhere there right now because it's all fenced off. Okay, so, the, so your parking lot has no parking on it, and the testimony to, tonight that we heard that 26th Avenue was parked all the way out is probably overflow parking from Moose's Tooth and other things that are happening. Maybe a spin class, because um, you know it's funny, people will. Herb Lee's lot actually has plenty of parking for a spin class because there's never that. But people would rather park where we in at Lamex or even on the street because it's closer. Mm -hmm. And that's why we've actually tried to get people in the Coots lot, for instance. But they're not going to go there till it's got a certain critical mass of people parking there because they're worried about car theft or it's a little dark walking over. So actually, some of these areas will get more use when there's better development in the area. And we saw the same thing at the Moose's Tooth because when we built the rock gym, um, we, we took our par excess parking area and made it nicer and lit it, and plus there's a bigger business over there. And so now... Moose's Tooth customers are fine using our overflow parking where they kind of weren't before. So the, the Lamex will actually help uh, expand the parking uh, rather than constrict it. Also, uh, uh, just as a little aside, too, for, as far as a food hall, um, we barely have enough space. If you look at these concepts, and, and we have in L.A., Portland, Seattle, Denver, and New York, we've traveled all these places, um, you know, we barely have enough square footage as it is, so it's not really viable, because I heard a couple of people mention do like half. Yeah, you, know, you could do a regular restaurant, but the food hall concept wouldn't be viable. So that is one thing to consider in this. But so twenty six, yeah. <coughs> so 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 okay, I understand. <clears throat> and I guess <clears throat> another question is that the parking across the way that you own, which is the windmill and Chilkoots. Right. And is that parking lot lit currently? It is lit. Well, lit. I, well, I just looked at it recently because I can't get anyone to park over there. Okay. <laughs> and uh, last time I parked there, it wasn't particularly well lit. Well, that's been several years ago. So. Correct. Okay. And one of the things we would do in the in the you know the 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 windmill is not in great shape, and there's there's not a lot of money there. Uh, technically, Coots and their lease is supposed to upkeep that, and uh, uh, it's not happening. Nor do I foresee it happening. So. When we redevelop, improving that lot and taking better care of that lot is, is on our agenda, and I think that will help all in, in all regards. So and we will, that lot, could you, could you just clarify? You're talking about the windmill lot? The windmill lot, yeah. Okay. We absolutely want to. We, we'll put better lights, LED lights in there. We need to fix the windmill because it doesn't really work. And so the, the parking lot's not very inviting right now. 
No, it's not. And that's, right. I guess one of my questions is, you know, trying to encourage people to go <clears throat> across the street to this dark parking lot or darker parking lot is not um, particularly. Just Currently, but, but one cool thing, when we, we worked with the, the commission when they put in the, the, the upgrades in Spinard, and they put in a crosswalk for us. So if you, if you notice, there's a really nice crosswalk directly from the, or from the Coots windmill parking to the Lamex. So as soon as we open up that fence a little and make it all nice, and, and I, it's, I, that's where people are going to park. And, and so that's why I guess I feel like we meet the, the, the letter because that parking is available. And the variance part is, is that we can't technically call it ours. That's how I see it, but it is there, and we have the right to park because we own the land. And those 37 parks are sitting there. They're just across the street. But the crosswalk's really nice. It's going to be easy and safe to get across. I use the one down by the Beartooth a lot, and it's made crossing Spinard a lot easier if I go to AMH. Another business I forgot to mention that's great in the area. <clears throat> Yeah, the, the <clears throat> difficulty for us is requiring you to <laughs> upgrade that parking lot, put lighting on it, and do a parking <laughs> agreement so that we can kind of go, oh, there's parking across the street, and it's going to be extra well lit. And, and you Right. Know. Well, I guess there I would only argue, I mean, look at our last project development, the rock gym, uh, and everything we did there, and the landscaping even. I mean, we put more exotic landscaping, rocks. It's very well lit. I mean, that's how we do our projects. And this is actually a scary project. I'm not going to lie. It's it's millions and millions of dollars, and the economics are tight on it. We'd actually make more running a successful restaurant than trying to find these these uh, smaller upstart businesses and vendors to go in there and, you know, they're running, they're, they're entrepreneurs, they're, we're, so we're only getting a, a little bit of rent. And, and so, anyways, this, as an assurance, based on our former developments and how we do it, we're not going to put upwards of seven, eight million dollars potentially into a project and not have the best parking that we can have and lighting and all that, because this is not going to be cheap. And it's scary. I mean, we still have to decide, even if you give us a variance, that we're actually willing to pull the, to do it. Because it's, it's kind of an all-in thing. But we could certainly say verbally or even, you know, that we'll, we're happy to upgrade that, that parking. And as long as it doesn't mean uh, full landscaping, because it is a grandfather parking lot, and if you actually met Tile 21 on that, then there would be such a loss of parking that I think it would be counterproductive to the whole project. But we'd do everything within the abilities to, of the current parking. Just like the REI mall, you know, they, if they did that to Tile 21, an already bad mall would be unusable. I think my, my concern is more light, lighting. and Yeah, lighting uh, 100%. Access, because that's where... Uh, you know, the concern is for the safety of the community, and, and it's not going to get used if it's not well lit. Right. I mean, it's the bottom line. You know that. We know right. that. Right. So. And we know we're even, you know, you, you even have coots right there, which right. is scary to some people. So that that mm. that's on our minds, too. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Leonetti. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so you guys are doing a great job. Thank you for... <laughs> Weathering the storm. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to reiterate what I said before. I, I'm definitely in favor of this. It's just a matter of trying to figure out how some of the questions that are still hanging. Um, one of them is this notion that, that good design. And you right. have 88 or 87, whatever the number is, that's there. And um, has, have you guys considered putting less in? less parking and making it a better designed, more efficient parking. Like, I can speak to that. <laughs> so this that might, that might <laughs> really torpedo some people on this commission, but so, um, I'm interested we, in hearing that. We, we certainly looked at those things. You did. The, mm -hmm. But this all starts with meeting what's required by Title 21. Right, which is so, the 80-something. But the grandfathered is 62. So did you look so, at... So, so we don't need to d debate yeah, this very so, <laughs> much. Just wondering if so. Yeah. So yes, we did. I, I had a plan that had slightly better site circulation. Didn't have the dead end or as long of a dead end. Mm -hmm. It had 
significantly lower parking on site, mm -hmm. but then now you're coming and asking for an even larger variance. But, but it did not meet the square footage requirements, which is why you went up to the square footage requirements. No, we're asking for a variance because our parking, even as it is, doesn't meet what's required by code. No, but the, the 88, I just had it here and I flipped away. If I could uncontrol Z. Oh, so, so that last parking calculation, just to clarify, the last parking calculation yeah. I did was not how we were directed to calculate it by the city. It was looking, if you looked at it based on the uses, because you had these areas that generated potentially more parking than would be park, you know, people, um, then yes, you could get to that number, but that wasn't, that wasn't what we were told by the city that we could move forward with. It's okay. the, what's required by Title 21 in that first table, the 152 minus the 28 that we're grandfathered in for. Okay. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner Cash. Thank you. Um, my question was just about that Coots parking. Um, there, there are no signs that say, you know, customer parking only or, or anything like that, are there? I mean, what is preventing? What's the big thing that's preventing people from using that lot? Well, currently, obviously, Little Max isn't open, so there's no one using that. Um, but the, uh, it's, it's, it's the distance. I mean, people, it's sort of what I was saying about the spin class. Uh, I do think we could better sign it. We haven't done it just because <laughs> when I tell friends they can park over there, they actually go over and park in the REI lot. They park in front of our administrative building, uh, that brown building. They never go over there. So that's, that was sort of what I was speaking to earlier, I think, in the sense of we need to get a critical mass of, of infrastructure and business there before people will. Yeah. Um, Walk the extra few feet, yeah. And then they then they will, because it's part of that, because, you know, the Moose's Tooth Overflow, which is adjacent to the Rock Gym, is further away. But now that the Rock Gym is there, mm -hmm. and it feels safe, and actually has a few fewer break-ins than our Moose's Tooth lot, um, people are, will park over there. So I, I, and we just haven't bothered to sign it because, because there seems to be enough parking on the street and these other places that people use. So we haven't, it's, it's, it's signed for coots, but it's not signed as a better to the alternative. Although the posters on our doors do, do suggest it. But I've never, I'll be honest, I've never seen one park over there. You have to <laughs> a better to the customer. It says park here. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Commissioner Morse. I feel like this might have been out of date. It had to do oh. with what <laughs> Commissioner Leonetti was um, speaking to. Is is there a chance to provide better design since you've proven that there is enough parking in the district? Is there a chance to provide better design on site? And I know that the plans aren't currently that developed, but I look at it as an architect and I'm not seeing a back door or a dumpster or the things that go with restaurants. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering how you keep this plan and this many parking spots as you continue through your design. Is, is 37 spots enough of a variance? So based on our discussions with the city and the site plan that we have now, it, it is adequate. Um, it's not to say that we couldn't have a plan that has more on-site circulation, but again, you're significantly reducing the parking you can provide. So this was a balance. Mm -hmm. and, and on the architectural items, the, the dumpsters, are those all located? Do those have space? Because your real estate is full, and I think we've both acknowledged that. Yeah, so those are, so the dumpster is something that we have been discussing on where to locate, but we feel like there is space there. Um, to locate it. Um, loading would m likely occur in off hours within the drive aisle there in front of the building, so um, there wouldn't necessarily be an official loading dock sure. that you would see. So there, there's those sorts of discussions that are happening and how to deal with some of those things. Okay, so I guess the, the final wrap-up question is you are confident that you won't be losing any additional spaces as design continues? Based on the current design, correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm not seeing any other requests to speak to the petitioner.
So I'm going to go ahead and uh, close the public hearing. Uh, I think that uh, Commissioner Sullivan did want to discuss this. I'm sure some of us would like to discuss this. So I guess first we'll go ahead and, and get a motion on the floor and then we can discuss it. So can I get a motion? I have a motion from Commissioner Morse and a second from <clears throat> Commissioner Sullivan. Commissioner Morris, do you care to speak to your motion? I plan to support the, the variance. I guess I'll start with that, and I look forward to the conversation. For the record, um, I move to approve case 2018 uh, Moreland Properties request for design variance to allow a reduction in off-street parking for Lamex. Subject to s staff conditions in the packet. <clears throat> Moment. S all staff conditions in the packet. One, two, and three. Thank you. Commissioner Sullivan. Um, it's very controversial, and I'm having a lot of comp conflicts in my head. I wonder if there's a way that we can hold it and have more time to think about. I mean, there's none, huh? It's, I mean, this is a question to the staff. I just feel that, you know, there's, there's something that is happening that is really good for Spinard. So we want this to happen because, yes, the max, it's, and I mean, that area, it's scary right now. So I would like to see something happening that makes it safer. On the other hand, I hear the people that live there that express that they have a concern with parking. Um, I'm very confused about, like, moving forward just to create this great community space and and then creating a, a problem. So there's a way that, you know, I would like to get more involved with the Spinard Center town and understand it more before taking a decision that that's a possibility. I mean, if I abstain of taking a vote, I mean, no. I don't know what's the, the route of, like, that there's any other way that we can think about more? So I think, and I'm going to look at my trusted friend here who helps me, um, that we can maybe come back to a discussion on the floor once we give it back to uh, Commissioner Morse to speak, to finish speaking to her motion, and then we can, we can open it up. Does that mean it's back to me? I, I, I would like to add, um, this is discussion. So to my fellow commissioners, I, I do see additional um, exceptions or uh, conditions to the variance that may be necessary to, um, to substantially meet letters C and D. Um, I see a, necess a necessity to upgrade the lighting in the windmill lot, lighting and access to the street in the windmill lot. I see a necessity for pedestrian amenity on the east side of the building, on the Spinard side. And I see a necessity to provide additional secure bike parking locations um, to, sub to supplement the um, requested parking variant. So for the 37 spaces, allow an additional 37 bike parking spaces. This is based on living in the neighborhood and understanding the amount of bike biking that does happen year-round. Um, so I'd like to hear from my fellow commissioners. Thank you. I have um, two commissioners that wish to speak and also staff. Mr. Yell, did you want to say something first? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, Commissioner Morse, uh, the UDC cannot impose uh, improvements be done to off-site uh, 
lots or off-site businesses as a condition of this variance. Um, and second, uh, the condition to add a pedestrian amenity, very difficult to enforce. How do you define that? Um, and what type of amenity would you place more value on? Uh, it would have to really be specific in that condition uh, with findings on why that condition was being placed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Commissioner Leonetti. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, <clears throat> I'm in favor of the motion. I think that uh, the petitioner has done a great job in displaying to us and explaining what their scenario is. I think that it's an add to the community. It's a it's a great addition, and it, and the parking is, I think, an issue. However, all of the plans discuss multimodal. And if we continue to increase or include parking in those plans, the multimodal is not going to happen. Um, I don't think it's necessary to postpone the case. I don't think it's necessary to require off-street parking. It's, you know, we have a, 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 a business owner that's, that's done great success in our community, and I don't think he's not going to do something great here. I, I'm confident that what he has done in his past restaurants, he's going to do here, and I don't think it's necessary to make additional conditions for adjacent to Spinard. If it were somebody else that you know wasn't somebody that was proven in the community, then then I would feel more compelled to make conditions. Um, the the business model has been successful in numerous other communities. This one, I think, will really test our community. If, if it will work or, or won't work, and I think it, it will work. It's just a matter of time and, and the community understanding the, the concept. I think that we need to have more findings of fact, so I will let other commissioners speak, and then if there's more findings, I can add them at that time. Thank you. Commissioner Winchester, I know you would like to speak, but I see that Commissioner Morse came up, and I'm not sure if you want to respond to Commissioner Leonetti. I would like to, actually. <clears throat> um, the the feedback on the additional bike parking is coming from being a user of the bike parking at the Beartooth lot uh, that's usually too full for me to fit my bike on um, and additional conversation with people that live within the community um, i I think after talk after hearing from staff the the upgrade off off lot we can't require so not negotiable and then the pedestrian amenity it sounds like that's the intent um, we just have under developed plans. So the, the one that I would stick to is the bike parking. Are we at findings? Is that why you mentioned it? So, so the motion's been made. Um, I thought we were in discussion. That's why I asked. Right, right. The motion's been made, and then we have discussions. There was discussion about additional conditions. No motions to amend were made. So no additional conditions are on the table right now. So right now we're just talking about the main motion. Mm -hmm. And if commissioners want to discuss their concerns with the motion, if they're in support of it or not in support of it, then that's, that's what we're doing right now. So, okay. so um, to add, since you asked for findings, I would like to add that the traffic study, although informal, has proven available parking in the area. The plan presented is in alignment with the 2040 land use plan the West Anchorage District Plan, and the Spinard Cor Corridor Concept Memo, um, all providing um, development in a town center area. Oh, that was all. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Winchester. Thank you. And uh, just to kind of add to the discussion here for a second, um, Agreeing with Mr. Leonetti, we haven't got any amendments on the table at this point, and your request for bike parking can be in two forms. We can either make an amendment to this or we can make an advisory request to the property owner to use that area in front or beside to increase the bike parking, and that can be something that gets worked out. As we all know, these drawings are, are very conceptual, so there's not a lot here in terms of real detail yet, and, um, but we can certainly request that, and it gets 
passed on to folks. And I wanted to uh, also reiterate a little bit, I, I do trust the developer here that I think we, we have to find a trust mo moment here that, that he's going to do what he says he's going to do, and, and that includes making this a successful project. And I think anyone who invests millions of dollars in something, uh, some of us have participated in that in other places in this community, um, y you don't do that without trying to make it successful. And it's pretty hard to say, well, gee, I'm going to invest seven million bucks or ten million dollars, but I'm not going to make it successful. So I think there's that part of it that we're expecting and, and appreciating, and certainly the city has made a substantial investment in this community and the town center and the whole idea. So I'm in agreement, and I'm going to support your motion uh, tonight. And I think that what we might do is just go on the record in your findings, if you will, that, that you are encouraging them to, a, to take on the detail of bike parking, uh, encouraging them to take on pedestrian amenities at that front area, which it, it's obviously perfect for, um, but not put any real requirements on it because otherwise we're we're just dealing with a whole bunch of of extra things that maybe don't work specifically because, as we all know, this, there's not enough detail here to really deal with. Um, so that would be my position on those comments. Agreed, agreeing to them, but let's put them in the form of a, of a, uh, uh, just a request of the developer to take those things into account in their final plans. And uh, I also wanted to speak to the amount of parking, and 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 that is, um, I think that we should. They are believing that the amount of parking they have here will that they can make that work. I agree that there's some dead ends here and there's some maybe not the best, but I think we need to also allow the community to, to, to sort of speak up here and say, we, but we need as much parking as we can get. And the 87 spaces seems to be the best they can do on this lot. Yes, it's dead ends, but it's supposed to be just for this building, so it's not supposed to be a big through parking lot, you know, do, do the racing through it. So I, I'm not as adverse or, I mean, I, I understand it's not the best, but it is 87 parking spots that this community needs, and I think they're going to make the best use of those. Um, and uh, so I really don't want to get into the second guessing because I haven't spent days and weeks <laughs> analyzing <laughs> their uh, Dowell's attempts to either do less or more here. Uh, and I think that our staff has, has allowed has looked at this too and said this is probably the best you're going to do and still get some space for maybe the the uh, the dumpsters and other things to happen so that's kind of where I'm at I'm, I'm going to let the rest of the professionals who've been working this project the most do the most that they can uh, and not try to second guess too much uh, but I am going to support your motion and I and I do agree that that the the bike parking and the pedestrian amenities are really great ideas, and I think the owner agrees with that and has stated so. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Cash, did you wish to speak? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this is a, a wonderfully complex situation, and the attributes... Um, that we're hearing and seeing are so positive. I, I want this to go forward. The one thing that doesn't work is the parking, and even though um, this is such an opportunity to help move this community center forward, I don't want it to be forced upon the property owners that live there and have lived there for many years. Um, so there seem to be some things that the success of this, and by the way, I believe this project will be a success if you um, develop it, I'm sure of it. And coming with that success are more people 
and people who, a few may want to come in and pick up food, but it's a new place. Hey, I'm going to want to go in and sit, see how it feels, and look who's there, and I'm going to want to hang out for a little bit. Plus, there's a, whoop, there's a glass of wine over here. So I'm going to hang out there. My car, if I drive in the winter, is going to be somewhere in that neighborhood. And um, we, so we're talking about success in the parking scenario being contingent on some things that aren't in place yet that could be in place that could help it. And, and so the, the period of time that it takes to develop all those finer points into success points um, is undetermined. And it's this interim period that I struggle with where the, the residents of the area are, are not knowing how to cope with, with you know, what they have now. And, um, and not that they're not going to love coming to the uh, food court, because I think they will, but what about how it affects their lives and their safety and if there are children in the neighborhood. And, um, you know, there, there are, are families there, and I want to respect that in a way that makes it, successful for everyone. So it's a tough order, and, and I'm struggling with that because I, I really want to be fair to everyone, and yet I want to see Spinard blossom. And um, so I, I'm not a it's, – it's a real tough issue for me right now because of that factor and just being honest with you. So I'm, I'm, I'm still thinking. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Leonetti. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ms. Cash, thank you for the, the discussion there and dialogue. And I'll just add a little bit that <clears throat> even though this is a discussion about a parking variance, it's also a discussion about community. And, and I'm not convinced that cars make communities. People make communities. We need to design to people and not to cars. And the less cars that are around, the more opportunities there are to take other modes of transportation and to get there. I'm convinced that the Spinard Road is well designed. I drive it about three times a week, and it's actually improving the hood, the neighborhood. And as a result, these guys are coming in and, and willing to, you know, roll the dice and, and have a development based on not only the auto, but also on the pedestrian and the bicyclist. And I think that that in itself, the community, the, the surrounding community, I think has embraced by accepting the the master or the the land use plans that have, that have all been approved. But the other the other notion about automobiles is that there's only a certain square footage that each automobile is going to take up. That's already allocated in the community, regardless of if they put an office building here or if they don't. If somebody's going to drive there, if 400 cars drive here and fill up 400 parking spaces and 600 people want to get here, the other 200 people are going to find another route to get there. It's not going to make it any more congested than it already is, I don't think. The, the parking spaces that are on the street are on the street, have been on the street for 50 years, and those aren't changing based on this development. What's changing based on this development is a potentially successful um, community place that multiple people can use and not just the automobile. And, and I think that it's going to take a time of adjustment for the surrounding residences and a little bit of, of understanding that, you know, it's, it's a benefit for the community. And it, and it is a bit of a risk for us and for the developer to make that leap and that our, our community doesn't need to be designed around the automobile. It can also be designed around the bus and the bikes and the people. So I just offer that information in, in discussion uh, for your comments and, and uh, happy to continue to, to, to discuss. Thank you. Commissioner Morse. As is my uh, theme tonight, I'm going to follow in Ed's words. And this building already exists, and it was once a restaurant. It's meant to be a restaurant or a, a retail place. <coughs> the parking... It's it's Spinard, right? We, we're stuck. We're landlocked. They've they've done the best that they can, and this was enough parking for the last restaurant that was there, um, or around that much. So to me, a lack of parking in a neighborhood that is probably the most multimodal 
um, in the city is is an acceptable um, is an acceptable exception to the rule. Uh, we talk about letters C and D, the you know benefiting the community, and this building not being empty anymore will benefit the community, um, especially when we look at public safety. Those those facts are undeniable. So. Just pointing out that although there are families that live in this neighborhood, those families could have been there when this was a restaurant, and it's it's a building that should be occupied and lively and not just shut down and mothballed. Commissioner Winchester. Thank you, Madam Chair, and, and uh, I, do, I do appreciate everybody's comments, and uh, Commissioner Cash and, and Leonetti and, and uh, Everyone, I, I do agree that, that, that this is an opportunity for, um, uh, for us as a commission to, you know, we're going we're, we're gonna to take a risk with the developer here a little bit um, because we're, we're stepping a little bit right onto the edge of, of where uh, the decisions are as a community. And we are the community and we're being asked to, to make that judgment call at this point. And I think um, it's, it's, it's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. And it's, in some ways, it's, it goes back to the situation, is it ready, aim, fire, or is it ready, fire, aim? And um, I think at this point, we're, you know, we're set up to, uh, if, if we follow every little thing and wait, as they say, for the city to come up with all the little pieces and parts to make this work perfectly, um, a project like this comes along and a developer comes along like this and it's not going to happen um, because they will find some place else or some other way to invest their money. Um, and where we are now is to say, okay, this is somebody who's coming along saying, I'm ready to invest in an existing building in a in a, in, a, in a use that was there forever, and maybe expand that use to some extent, yes, and um, but at the same time, buying other properties uh, in the area, looking at the parking across the street, looking at lighting those things, uh, working with the community to develop this whole community spirit here is really important, and uh, and we've got to encourage that. I mean, if we don't, who will? Because it's certainly not going to be uh, anywhere else. Uh, you know, I mean, we, you know, the assembly rewrote Title 21, and they still didn't fix all the problems. <laughs> no matter what we say, they, there's still these issues of parking and all these little edges and, and pieces and parts. So it, it, I think it's our job to step up at this point and really evaluate this project in this location based on the 2040 plan and all the other attributes that are here. And I appreciate the testimony tonight from the people who said this is really a tough situation. Uh, you know, the red, the, the rustic goat, all of those things. I mean, I've been to all of those places. I've been to the Beartooth when I had to park, you know, four blocks down the street. I mean, I, I know what those things are about and yet it's a successful business, and if you said, well, we're just going to close the Beartooth and Spinard because parking is a problem, what would that do to the community? And I think we have to evaluate that as well and say, okay, how do we encourage that? They're going to have to be a parking district in Spinard, and the, you know, the city will eventually probably pull that together with the help of this owner and his, you know, hopefully petitioning the city to help put that together. But it's going to take the private citizens to demand that that, that, that happen on a, on a district-wide level. And uh, this, this body can encourage that to happen by putting these situations in place that allow for the city to have to step up and say, okay, we really do need to deal with Spinard as a parking district. And we have to go in there and really help those property owners work together and, and the city work together with them. So um, I, I still believe in this. I believe in Spinard. Um, I was born in Spinard. So, <laughs> so, so when, it, when it was Spinard, Alaska, by the way, a whole city in and of itself, 
Um, and so I, I think that's where we have to go tonight. And uh, I'm just going to encourage the, the commission to consider that that we are on that threshold and that we, we, we have that ability tonight to set a precedent in that direction. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Winchester. I have a question from the traffic engineer, Ms. Marmillo. To the chair, thank you. I'm, I just wanted to provide a comment, I guess, is when these petitioners first brought this forth, they brought it forth as a parking reduction that would have fallen only to me to make a decision. And I felt this was too big of a decision for one person to make. It was a great burden to bear as that person. I, I see, I'm very encouraged to hear the discussion that has happened this evening because this is the things that I struggled with. I discussed it with petitioners. I brought up many of these points. I have concerns from the neighbors. And to be honest, if there are issues here, it will fall to my department to resolve because we are the ones that are required to go out there and sign things, no parking. We are the ones that are going to have to deal with some of the safety issues if there's problems with pedestrians crossing in inappropriate locations or having some of these issues. And my department said we do not have an objection to this, specifically because there are many areas in Spinard that I don't see redeveloping without us looking at the community as a whole and considering some of the plans we have in. The code that I am bound by, and it is my job to support and enforce, does not fully support some of those desires within those plans, those adopted plans and policies. And so I struggled with this, and I just wanted to say thank you for having these debates and these conversations because they're also the things I was struggling with, and I'm really encouraged to hear you on behalf of the community looking at all of these, dis you know, these conditions because I have those similar concerns. Thank you. Thank you. And no one has heard from the chair, and I do have my own um, thoughts on, on this case before us. I think it is a fantastic idea. I am in support of the motion. Um, you know, I believe more in the calculations on the third table than I do in the calculations in, in code as far as the use of the building, the available space, that sort of thing. Um, also, I, having worked with the traffic department as an engineer on multiple um, situations, they're not easy to get things to pass through. And so upon, upon reading the staff packet and realizing that the traffic department had um, supported the project based on a bullet list of items means that, that the petitioner has done their job to bring forth all of the information and do the studies and what's necessary to, to make this work. That being said, I also think um, the Spinard Community Council and North Star Community Council had, at least the Spinard Community Council, passed a resolution unanimously uh, to support this project. That's pretty big. Um, and the North Star Community Council also supports the project per the public testimony. So we have the backing of the community in the area. We have the backing of the traffic department with her own concerns um, for, for the project. Um, additionally, it was a restaurant for I don't know how many years. I've, I was born and raised here. I went to that Lomex since I was five years old. I, you know, to see that building sit there and decay and not become something, you know, to support this phenomenal Spinard Corridor that we're developing is just, it hurts my heart. So I'm, and to know and have trust behind the developer, you know, I mean, that's, we have to bring that to light. The, you, you've done a great job on your previous jobs. Obviously, there were some parking situations and issues coming through, but who knew you'd be so successful? And I know that this will also be a successful endeavor. Um, and I had another point, and I'm, oh, and also being that I deal a lot in non-motorized transportation and multimodal communities, if you don't force it to happen, people will continue to drive. And so by creating this corridor, which actually is in a transit alternative cor corridor per the plan, you're encouraging that change. 
Um, I travel to Seattle. I know I'm going to take an Uber and or the tram to get somewhere. I'm not going to try to park downtown Seattle because I know that I'm not going to be able to park there very easily. And so it's just going to be a change in the mindset of the community. And I definitely do not want to postpone this project or an otherwise hamstring the project because I believe maybe you're shy a few parking spaces. Um, but anyway, I have been pretty silent <laughs> other than a few um, requests for commissioners to speak, and I thought I should put my point out there. So, Oh, Commissioner Morse. Just like to add some additional findings since it is my motion. Um, <clears throat> the findings of the approval criteria for the variance, I'd like to go through point by point. So the first one is that the proposed alternative achieve, achieves the intent of the subject design, and we find that the standard is met, that they've accommodated as much parking on site as possible, and given that it was an existing restaurant um, with the same functionality, our code has just made the site obsolete. Um, the next one is the proposed alternative achieves the goals and policies of the comprehensive plan to the same or better degree of the subject standard. I think we've all touched on this. It does meet the, the comprehensive plan um, with no doubt as a town center and transit supportive development corridor uh, listed in the 2040 plan. This is exactly the type of development that is meant to happen in the area. So in a transit supportive development corridor, should we not allow, um, we should allow reduced parking. Uh, the next one is the new commercial development shall be located to contribute to an improving Anchorage's overall use efficiency and compatibility. So this one touches on keeping retail use in business class uh, zoning, which it obviously does. It was previously a restaurant and is, continues to be a restaurant. Uh, the next condition was the transit supportive development corridors, as identified on the land use policy map, shall be... Point of order, Madam Chair. I'd just like to state that uh, uh, the uh, commissioner is uh, referring to policy number 21 and policy number 34 as standards. Uh, those are just policies within the comprehensive plan. They are not the standards of the variance approval. Thank you. Fair point. Okay. Next standard, which is the proposed alternative results in benefits to the community that are equivalent to or better than compliance with the subject standard. This one was under debate tonight, but I believe I have found proof that this proposed project benefits the community and just happening and the, the combined collective trust that we put in this developer that has already proven themselves in our community will, will benefit the community with this development. Uh, the next standard, uh, the variance if granted will not adversely affect the use of adjacent property as permitted under this code. Uh, I find that the standard is met tonight in talking with the landowner who additionally owns land adjacent to the property they are in in fact investing in themselves in providing parking although it be not in a formal agreement that feels very fitting in the spinard area they have planned to not adversely affect their neighbors and have proven that tonight uh, the next standard, the variance if granted, does not change the character of the zoning district where the property is located. This is, this is obviously met as it is a restaurant and will continue to be a restaurant. Uh, the next standard, persons with disabilities are provided with access as required by the ADA with reasonable, reasonable accommodation. And tonight we saw that this project is not just taking an old restaurant and, and opening it again, but actually adding to the building to provide these accessibility measures, the parking meets ADA. The entire project seems to accept the need for um, 
accommodating people with disabilities. Uh, the next standard, the variance if granted does not adversely affect the health, safety, and welfare of the people of the municipality. This standard is met. It will, in fact, improve the health, safety, and welfare and potentially decrease the amount of public safety calls called to the area because it will no longer be a vacant property. And the last standard, in evaluating the request for a variance from the maximum sign height, the Urban Design Commission may consider whether there are special topographic circumstances that would result in a material impairment of the visibility of the sign of the adjacent roadway, which significantly diminishes the owner's or user's ability to continue to communicate adequately and effectively with the public through use of the sign. This standard is met because it does not involve a sign. Thank you. Oh, Commissioner Cash. Thank you. I have a question for staff, Mr. Yell. Um, it's, my, it's my understanding, of course. Well, I, I was a frequenter of Lummex for years also. Our kids grew up going there because I, I couldn't come home and cook too. But my question for you is, um, if it were just going to be another restaurant uh, that wanted to rebuild in that location or I mean reoccupy that location these my conclusion is that they would be subject to a variance in all likelihood just any restaurant just by virtue of the parking calculations in title 21 is that correct uh, madam chair uh, commissioner cash if the restaurant were to be occupying the full footprint of the current development, then yes, they would need a, a variance. Um, if they were choosing to only develop one floor or choosing to not do any type of expansion like they're proposing with this project, it may be a different story because you'd have, uh, uh, you wouldn't have as great of square footage uh, that you would have for this project. Thank you. Commissioner Leonetti. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll just add <clears throat> a couple more findings. Um, there is a, a non-conforming status determination uh, that was amended, dated May 10, 2018, that uh, outlines all of the requirements for the parking and all of the um, non-conforming determinations that should be referenced as a, a key factor in this packet. Um, there was discussion tonight that the parcels are being replatted into one parcel and I believe it was not completed yet or it's almost completed um, just noted that there there it's been approved by a platting board thank you but but not uh, oh I miss that no that's something different and then um, we had four just general public um, testimony there were four people testified tonight two in favor two against and then I believe there was five in the packet um, three in favor and two against. Thank you. Thank you. I would, I think discussion is complete, so I'll go ahead and restate the motion so we can vote. Okay, so. Okay, so the motion on the floor is for case 2018-0111, request for design variance from AMC 210709OE to allow reduction in off-street parking requirements for redevelopment of the former Lamex building and tortilla factory. Uh, we have a motion on the floor. Um, do I need to take a look at the page? Okay. <laughs> motion to approve this um, this variance subject to the department's conditions one through three. Do we need to reset this? Can we get a vote? So it looks like the motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Thank you for coming and thank you for what you do for our community. Okay, we're still in session here, so I wanted to. All right, I'm going to move on to commissioner's comments. So we do have a proclamation tonight in honor of Commissioner Leonetti. I'm just going to go ahead and read from this. We, okay. Whereas Edward Leonetti was appointed to the Municipal Urban Design Commission by the Mayor of Anchorage on January 14th, 2014, and whereas during his term he offered valuable information, advice, and counsel on matters pertaining to planning and zoning, and whereas he volunteered his personal time in service of the public. Whereas on October 14th, 2018, Edward Leonetti completed four years and nine months on the commission. Now therefore, Ethan Berkowitz, not I, Mayor of the Municipality of Anchorage, recognize Edward Leonetti and encourage all residents to honor and congratulate Edward for his commitment and dedicated service to the commission and the residents of Anchorage. Thank you very much, Commissioner Leonetti. Thank you. That was very kind. Not who orchestrated that. <laughs> yeah, we'll get him a point next month. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That was very nice. Thank you. It's been fun on the uh, being on here, and I've learned a lot. And as you guys have read in the emails, it's we all learn a lot, and it's been joy. And if I could sit in for a few more, I will. And if there's more, then maybe I will too. It's all up in the air. But yeah, hmm. thanks. Sad. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, can I get a motion to adjourn? Yes, I wanted the oh. motion, but, but I want to say something. I felt pretty confident that the staff have similar concerns and that it's willing to mitigate the issues if there's issues in the future. I mean, I, I was very calm when I heard that you guys will look if there's, I mean, I'm just concerned about the, the, what we could create, right? There's a risk that well, we're taking. I, I, I don't think we're going to create anything that's not already there, though. I mean, if you think about the capacity of the parking that's available. It's hard. It's it, hard it is hard. That area. I mean, I, I'm just happy that they yeah. will They're get to be yes. there. It was very calming to know that you had the yes. same. I just had to say that. <laughs> uh, I a motion to adjourn. We're done. <laughs> no, no, they have, com they have oh, comments. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to state. Um, the rustic goat was a complete different situation um, with the parking that was in the nearby vicinity the traffic department was not um, talked to in that discussion mm -hmm. when that was done it was done in opposition to our recommendations mm -hmm. and in this situation I mean we're going into it open eyes I'm aware of the parking situation in the area and I want to push us towards community parking in this area and we need an incentive. And I'm hoping this is the incentive. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion to adjourn from Commissioner Winchester and a second from Commissioner Morse. Gavel. Hit it. Hit it.